It is Monday, June 22nd, 2015, coming to you live from the studios of the Hagman Hagman Report here in Northwest Pennsylvania. I'm Doug Hagman at the helm with fellow investigator, researcher, and most importantly, my son, Joe Hagman. Together, we are the Hagman and Hagman Report, America's premier father-son investigative reporting team. You know, our, it's our job as we look at it to bring in the news that propels the headlines, the news that's uh, really being shaped and convoluted and really hidden amid a, a funhouse of smoke and mirrors in the carnival that we call the corporate media. And, and looking at the corporate media, it just it makes you feel like a, uh, oh, I, I don't know, it, it makes you feel intellectually inferior in, in a sense, um, the way that uh, the information is presented to you. Anyway, we do the headline and news triage so you don't have to. We want to thank all of our new listeners for checking in from all over the world. The emails start coming in long before the show starts. For our new listeners, of course, we broadcast live every Monday through Friday, 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And our home base, well, we're on the Internet at Hagman and Hagman.com. Now, from there, you can access us live. Look on the right-hand side. Um, as well as all of our past shows, just click on, for now, for now, folks, just click on the uh, RSS feed. And uh, you don't have to subscribe to the RSS. We just click on that, and that'll bring up the listing of past shows. And uh, we also have all of our social networking sites uh, linked to HagmanHagman.com, as well as our uh, original investigative reports. And, uh, uh, boy, I'll tell you, tonight uh, we're going to be piercing a, a fog of disinformation, misinformation, and misdirection, helping you see what's important, but really are not meant to see. Now, uh, tonight, our special guest is going to be Dr. Ted Brewer from HealthMasters.com. Be- before we get into the show, you know, I, it just I'm just so proud to announce that tonight's broadcast is sponsored to you by Nature Box. Nature Box ships great, tasty ships. I mean, boy, the, the select. I mean, the selection they've got, the variety, the deliciousness of their snacks. Oh, Nature Box, if, you, if you've never heard of this company, folks, you're in for a treat. They ship tasty and guilt-free snacks right to your door. They've got over 100, count them, 100 flavors to choose from. And you can choose things like mini Belgian waffles and uh, sweet and salty nut medley, uh, chocolate banana chips. Oh, man, <laughs> you just, oh, you talk about delicious. You talk about uh, it, it just well, and I gotta tell you, the snacks are, are made with integrity. How's that? Made with integrity. At any rate, try Nature Box for free. Just go to naturebox.com slash CFP radio. That's naturebox.com slash CFP radio. And, and go to, uh, or go to hagmanhagman.com. Scroll all the way down on the on the bottom there. Look for the Nature Box. Uh, box there and click on that and that'll take you to our special world at Nature Box Show. Okay, we've got um, we've got a great show planned for yes, you tonight. Yes, And we and, and emails coming in. Uh, Jackie, thank you. We'll uh, pose that question to Ted uh, uh, as well as others. Uh, Ted Brewer talking about a number of things from uh, uh, personal health preparations, which we all need to make as as time seems to be growing short, as well as his take on uh, current global and domestic events so anyway and i hope everybody out there had a happy father's day yeah um, special <clears throat> father's day got to relax spend some time with the family yeah um uh, as we do talk about a lot of uh uh craziness in the news and and stories that don't seem to be uh too kind to the heart and mind uh hopefully yesterday we had a, you had a chance to uh enjoy the time with your families but with that we have our guest with us mr ted royer healthmasters.com good friend of the program and his book body by ted and breakthrough health don't forget that yes that's re- that's a requirement for the library let me tell you i, I don't think there's it, it, that's the only book you need i mean for health breakthrough health that's my opinion but body by ted i'll, I'll never have a body by ted <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Great to have you back on the show, Ted. It's been a while. And uh, <laughs> hey, Doug, hey Joe, good to I've hear got you. a bunch of new. St- I got a bunch of new stuff to go over. I got a bunch of notes. I got a bunch of new stories, and so I'm just going to kind of take my time, if you don't mind. Even though I've got 18 pages of notes here, I want to be able to take my time going through all this with you guys because there's no point in rushing through it because we got three hours. So there you go. And everybody well, keeps well, telling me to slow down. 
Exactly. Yeah, that, that, I got an email today saying, I love him. I love him, but you know, I got to listen to the show five times because he packs so much information into the into the show. But but you know, that's fine. So here's what we're gonna do, Ted. We're gonna lay our, we're, we're gonna turn our microphones off. We're gonna go out, uh, have a swim in the <laughs> Olympic sized in ground uh, swimming pool, and uh, come back at the top of the. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, oh man, how you been, brother? You know, I've been blessed. We had a good Father's Day. I've got a 14-year-old daughter right now who thinks her sole duty of being alive is to gnaw on the bones of her parents and to teeth on us on a regular basis. So it's been pretty interesting with her. Uh, the 16-year-old is doing great. The 12-year-old is doing great. The 14-year-old, of course, started her menstrual cycle. So I think that's giving her some issues. She wasn't really like this until she started all that. So it's been interesting. So I always tell my son Harrison, who's 16 years old, who's in his starting his second year of college now, I always say, Harrison, don't leave me here with three women. <laughs> and ladies, forgive me, but you know what I'm talking about. My oldest son, he's already 27 years old, and he's moved out you know, long ago. And Harrison's the last male here in the house. is the last vestige of sanity that I get here. And I told my son just a few minutes ago, I said, your mom has turned into a screamer because of the 14-year-old. And he started laughing. You mean, you think mom's a screamer? I said, no, I don't think mom's a screamer. She's always yelling at you guys now. And I said, it's ridiculous. I kind of just try to stay out of my office. And you can deal with the raising of teenagers, I tell her. And I'll just sit here in the office and prepare for my shows and do what I do. So it's been an interesting experience. But we had a wonderful Father's Day. And so that's been a lot of that has been a lot of fun. And so we've got a lot of great stuff to cover with you. And we want to talk about the globals and what they're doing. I've got some really good news. I've got 14 steps that you can do as far as to prepare for the new world order, how to slow it down, to stop it, and to prepare yourselves. We're going to cover those. Plus, we've got these a whole bunch of notes we've got to go through tonight. So I've got a lot of brand new information that I want to cover with you guys. And also I want to talk about what I believe was the false flag with this shooting last week at the church, uh, you know, up in Charleston, which, you know, we're going to talk about the drugs that kid was on. And, of course, it just reeks of another false flag. And as you guys already know, and I'm sure you've already discussed, when Obama had his press conference, they were voting on that alternative to the TPTP uh, at the exact same time of the press conference, and so it was more obfuscation in the press and more, you know, more, 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 another, another Monica missile, I call it. You know, when every time Bill Clinton wanted to go do something in Afghanistan, or you know, we got in trouble with Matt Monica in the press, he would just launch another missile in Afghanistan, and so the whole thing was just a joke. So, so we're just uh, we're just going to talk about all that stuff tonight. So whenever you get guys get ready, we'll get going with it. Well, let me let me check to see if I'm ready. Yeah, I'm buckled in. My my, my seat back is in its whole upright and locked position. So, you, you know, we're good to go. And uh, uh, yeah, I just want to join Joe in uh, in saying I do hope that all of the fathers out there did have a, a good Father's Day. And uh, you know, it's it's time now that we appreciate. Well, it's always always been that way, but even more so, we have to appreciate our family and um, uh, really come together to the best of our ability. You know, because um, the family is so important, and uh, friendships, trust, loyalty, it's all so important. But uh, anyway, Ted, just uh, t- take us wherever you want to go. Fire away, buddy. Well, let's let's talk about so this. It's been a month since I've been on with you guys. Let's talk about the last month and how we've basically been bombarded with the obfuscation of Bruce Jenner and his nauseating transformation. And we already mentioned what I expect to be another false flag for the fast past few weeks. You know, we've had to deal all of this junk. With all of this chunk, you know, from a mental standpoint, spiritual standpoint, uh, and I'm just going to tell you guys this tonight: human beings, especially the American population, has been given a full frontal assault by the media and by the and by corporate America, who's all pretty much owned now by the Rothschild satanic cabal. And we know that. I mean, it's not like we're trying to make any of this up. Uh, we've been assaulted biochemically in our bodies, sociologically in our minds, in our culture. Uh, we've been we've been assaulted spiritually, you know, spirit, soul, and body altogether. I mean, we've just been attacked. And I'm going to cover all of these individually tonight and talk about what's been happening to us and why they've done this and why they're doing this. And then we're going to get some alternatives to what we can do, because I've got so many other news stories that we're going to cover tonight, all the way from the, 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 the crash of the China. I mean, the Chinese stock market's crashing. You've been watching what's going on with that thing. It's oh, down yeah. almost 10% in a week. And so, you know, it was already in a huge bubble. And, you know, I remember that when we had that big drop-off in 2008, you know, it started in China, then spread into Europe, and it came to us. But the population of the United States and the world is basically sick at every level, spiritually, socially, everywhere. We as a country think it's okay, Doug, to do whatever we want to do, whenever we want to do it, to whoever we want to do it to. It's okay if we attack people. And I know one of these British guys in the parliament over there came out yesterday and, and made a big statement to the press that he thinks that it was a mistake attacking Iraq. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know when I, when I hear stuff like that, 
I just laugh, and, I, and forgive me because I have some of a dry, with, dry sense of humor with this kind of stuff. Because, I mean, is he really that dull that we already don't know that it was <laughs> that was a mistake back in Iraq? I said it was a mistake. We went into Iraq. I mean, Saddam was maintaining the struggle over there as far as maintaining it. I remember I talked to General Schwarzkopf and to Colin Powell at length about this. I mean, I didn't hear this from anybody else. I personally spoke to them for hours in the ready room before they were speaking back in the 90s after the Gulf War of 1991. And I specifically asked both of them in detail, independently of one another, why we didn't go into Iraq. And they basically said, if we go into Iraq, we're going to completely destabilize the entire Middle East. Of course, they didn't know that right after that we made a, we decided to have a plan to go in and destabilize all the countries and put the Rothschild Central Bank, which I guess where they're whipping where they're, they're, where they're, where they're mercenary army into all these different countries. Example, let's take this past week when a group of teenagers, you guys may not even remember the story, uh, carried a full front assault on a pool party in Texas. Uh, the police were called. The kids were running wild, playing filthy music. Many of them were trespassing, jumping the fence. Uh, the police arrived to this chaotic mess. Many kids listened to the police and basically sat down so they could calm down. Some of them did not. Some were screaming at the children, yelling at the kids. You know, the police were killed yelling at the kids. The kids were yelling at the police. They wouldn't listen to the police. You know, and Doug, as a parent, I realize that some teenagers think the only purpose in life is just to hassle people. I got that, okay? But the reality is when police come and they're called and something, people are trespassing, people just need to calm down and let everybody sort things out. One of these, well, one of these screaming brat kids had to be forcibly restrained. If you remember seeing the pictures of that or not last week. And, of course, the immediate charge was racism because the cop had to hold this girl down. So, of course, the police, the police, everything's racist now. If you don't like Obamacare, you're a racist. If you don't like Fast and Furious, you're a racist. If you don't like it, you don't like anything they do, you're a racist. So if the police officer doesn't want to put up with a screaming, out-of-control brat, then he's a racist, of course. If we as a culture don't endorse Bruce Jenner, then we're a bigot or a racist. The uh, Sabatain Frankist Kabbalists who run the Federal Reserve and thereby most of the world want to destroy God's creation, period. Uh, you know, what is good according to God is bad according to them. And I mean, when I did that show with Henry McCow with you guys, oh gosh, three or four or five months ago now, we talked about that in detail. Uh, they've done everything possible by their control of the media to brainwash, reprogram, alter, change, destroy the very values that this country was founded on, the very values of the uh, Bible, the uh, Old Testament, the Torah. Uh, not the not the Babylonian Talmud, I may mean, I mean, add. Uh, but let me be have more specific. Specific, I don't have some curse. Let's talk about biochemical. Uh, biochemically, uh, Doug, Joe, they had to do something with the men of the United States. That we were we were basically too macho. You know, that's why you know we we coined the term male chauvinist pigs, and uh, you know that's where it came from from the feminists in the 60s, because the men who came out of World War II who had gone through a, you know through that carnage in Europe and had gone through all that fighting, uh, they were pretty tough. And uh, they were they were men, and I'm not saying that they should be macho, picking on women and all that kind of nonsense. They should respect their wives, et cetera. I believe that. But biochemically, men had to be chemically castrated by the globalists. They had to think that being a man was wrong. They had to think that liking women, you know, you know, is is is, is was wrong. Okay, or being opposed to alternative sexual practices was wrong, or opening a car door or a door for a woman was wrong, uh, protecting a woman was wrong. Uh, wanting to be married and have children and have a godly family was wrong. And the only way they could do that is they had to chemically castrate them. Uh, this, is, this has been done through the radical feminism, the, and, and basically the, the, the liberal, man-hating, God-hating, lady-hating beliefs of the super-masculine, far-left feminists, women who literally, dug, take and inject feeling the male hormones, testosterone, into their bodies on a regular basis to have more aggression and more hatred for all that God created, particularly men. It's been done through the use of placing, you know, intentional estrogens in the food supply. We know that with the beef and with the chicken supply, which actually will grow breasts on boys and, uh, you know, on girls, little girls, because of the estrogen. It's been done by the use of soy. It's been done with the use of GMOs. It's been done by putting BPA in our food, the best phenol A in all the plastics. And when you cook in the microwave, particularly when it's wrapped in plastic, uh, there are literally hundreds of estrogen mimickers in the water, air, food, cosmetics, plastics, and household products. It has been done by the use of statin drugs, and drugs like Prozac and Zoloft and sleeping pills and Ritalin, all of which have potentially, you know, have potential natural remedies. I mean, it's easy to lower cholesterol. But remember, if you put stat people on statin drugs, Doug, and your cholesterol goes under 200, your testosterone goes through the floor. Your sex drive goes through the floor, and you stop being what makes you a man. You stop your testosterone. And what ends up happening is, 
the lower you go down towards 100 with your cholesterol, the higher your rates of cancer and other diseases go through the roof. So your, your, your cholesterol should be between 200 and 300, and it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But they don't want that. I know people that come into the office who have their cholesterol, they get them tested because of their diet. They're down at 160, 170, and the doctor says, your cholesterol is high. I want it at 100. Stupid stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, they do, they all kind of, it's just crazy. No, it's crazy, Doug. It's crazy. Yeah, it is. And the guys it come is. in, they, but they start on the statin drug. They can't think. They come in my office, and they're, just, they're sitting there, and they're going, you know, I can't remember anything. Just the other day, I went by, I saw an old friend of mine. His name's Howard Holmes. And Howard's in his 80s. And the last time I had seen him, he was new. He knew it was like a year ago. He knew who I was. You know, I've known him for over 30 years. I went up to his house the other day. He was sitting in the backyard, you know, kind of in a stupor, staring at a guy grinding a stump. And I said, Howard, how are you doing? But good seeing you again. And he goes, uh, I don't know you. And I said, Sure, you do, Howard. He goes, oh, I'm sorry. I, you kind of look familiar. I don't know you. And I said, Howard, I've known you for 30 years. I've spent thousands of dollars with you. He's a carpenter. I said, you don't, You've done work for me in all my different houses. And I said, I can't believe you don't know me. I have no idea who you are. And I said, you're taking statin drugs, aren't you? And he goes, what's that for cholesterol? And I said, yeah. He goes, I take those every single day. He's, I've been taking them for about a year now. And I said, how's your memory? He goes, well, I can't remember anything. I don't even know who you are. And I said, well, my office is almost catty corner behind your house. And he goes, oh. Then uh, uh, he did finally, finally, after I gave him a bunch of clues, he remembered who I was. And so I went home. He gave me a whole list of the meds he was taking, uh, Doug. And I went home. And I actually went to my computer, and I printed up all of the side effects, and I went back to see him within an hour. I mean, I broke my whole day schedule because I wanted to help the guy. And I went back, and he goes, well, what's the doctor going to say when I tell you when I tell him that yeah, I don't want to take these drugs? I said, he'll tell you you're crazy. And I said, well, let me ask you a question, Howard. How's your memory doing? How's your health doing? How's your body doing? He goes, Ted, I hurt so bad. I got pains everywhere. And I said, well, that's one of the side effects of the statins. And I said, it's also going to cloud your memory and cloud you and destroy your cholesterol and, and destroy your, in the process, destroy your testosterone. You're going to be unbelievably weak. He goes, well, I don't even want to do anything. He goes, well, I'm, just, I'm just massively depressed all the time now. And I said, that's because of the statins. And I see, that's what happens, Doug. And, that's what they, they, and they know that those drugs do that. I mean, and I've written so many. When you go, if you go to healthmasters.com, you can sign up for a free newsletter that I write on health. And it comes out to you three times a week. And I've, I've written extensive articles on statin drugs and how dangerous they are and how I would never, ever, ever have product on the market. All it is there for, some 40 million people taking it, is there to, to, to be part of the $3.1 trillion medical bills that we have in the United States every month, every year, because of the huge amount of profit they make on these. But all of these things have natural remedies. Uh, they, they also have done it with diabetes drugs, like, like the statin drugs can destroy kidney function, and drugs like metformin, which have been linked repeatedly to pancreatic cancer. I uh, remember, Doug, back, well, back in January, last year, I guess it was December, uh, your blood sugar was way high, and we were yeah. able to bring it back down naturally. And uh, I think you told me last week you're completely off all your meds now that the doctor had given you, and you got yeah. your blood sugar is normal. Yeah, it, it, and see, it's see, better than normal, actually. Yeah, in, in fact, uh, it went too far the other way. But uh, uh, remember, yeah. I warned you when you started the program. I said, Doug, you've got to monitor your glucose because if you start doing yeah. what I'm telling you to do, you know, your blood sugar can drop down too low. Right. And uh, and so it's it, it is so easy to do it without drugs. And I see it's just it's just it's consistency. And you saw that over a period of six or seven months, it's just consistency. You'll have an immediate response, and then you have to kind of be careful with what you do because sometimes you may actually you have to drink some juice or something because <laughs> your blood sugar will drop down too low. But I have to watch the juice though. When I drink juice though, it really dumps my blood sugar, especially stuff like orange juice. I can do uh, pomegranate juice, which by the way is excellent for helping to clean out the arteries and get rid of placking. But I don't do it with the orange juice that drops my sugars too low. Plus, all the crops in here are sprayed with so much pesticides. It's ridiculous. But I know how much we helped you. And I remember it was so funny. I was doing a show with Dave Hodges last week. And he was having all kinds of knee problems. And I put him on a knee protocol for his, uh, for his knees. And, uh, you know, and then all of a sudden he said, well, gosh, Ted, my knees don't hurt anymore. And he was about to have surgery. And so when you go to the healthmasters.com website, we now have the Dave Hodges Healthy Joint Protocol. <laughs> Man, thanks and for doing Doug, that. And the Doug Hagman Blood Sugar Protocol. <laughs> for, for, for a while there, I thought, man, man I got a, a, a not a disease, but a protocol named after me. I really didn't want to be the only one up there. So thank you for uh, putting <laughs> Hodges up there too. Well, you're welcome. I told Dave, I said, you mind if I because what happens is whenever I do this. And we talk about this. Everybody says, I want Doug, whatever Doug has. And then nobody knows what Doug has because you know, they have to call all my reps. Otherwise, they can't just click on it and order it online. And so that's why when we put these protocols together, but Dave was going in for knee surgery, and now it looks like he's going to stop doing that. And we've had so many people. I had another one of Sharon's friends. Uh, Doug came over a couple, about two years ago now. and he was His back was so messed up. 
that he was just a wreck. He couldn't even work. And, and his, his name was Dave also, by the way. And he ended up, uh, it was, in fact, he was a wife of a high school friend of Sharon's named Jenny. And he ended up uh, coming to the house, and I showed him, number one, you have to have good seating. That's really, really important. If you've ever had back problems, you can't sit in a lousy car seat. You, you know, whatever the car seat is stock, whatever car I buy, if they have an upgraded seat, especially if they have a Recaro seat, I always order it. Because you know the seats. When you're sitting for four or five hours driving, they have to they have to be good seats. You can't be having seats that sag, etc. And so that's why I always tell people just order the extra option. If you do ever do buy a new car, I just make sure you get the best seats available to it. So I had to show them how to do the seats. So I showed Dave how to do all of that. In fact, I had a couple of chairs that we were using where they were really really good back chairs. I just gave them to him because they were out in the barn and storage. So here, just have these. And he finally called me up. I got him on the back protocol. And he called me up about three or four weeks later. He goes, Ted, I don't know what to do. I said, what do you mean? I said, he says, I'm feeling so much better. He goes, I'm almost completely out of pain. He goes, I was going to have to go in for massive surgery. And they're going to be fusing a bunch of vertebrae together. And he goes, I have no more pain. He goes, I, as long as I'm careful and I watch the seats like you told me and take the supplements, I'm, I'm just I'm completely pain-free. And I said, well, I'm really glad you've been blessed like that because it's just one thing you have to just really monitor. And you have to be careful how you bend over, how you pick things up and all that. Uh, but but anyhow, everybody can go to healthmasters.com. They can sign up for the newsletter if they like. And uh, you know, it's just it's just you know, it's like I told everybody, Doug. I've spent 400 hours in the biochemical genetics lab at Florida State University. That was back in the spring of 1977. Uh, I know what the globalists and the Rothschilds are doing to us because of the biochemistry training that I have. And the thing about it is, is they know what they're doing too because they've had the same biochemistry training. They are literally destroying the DNA. And our epigenetics proves it. I mean, you look at the, uh, the children's DNA of, our, of the parents that are eating the GMO foods or have the immunizations, and we've changed the genetics of the next generation through the sperm and through the eggs because of DNA damage, which is carrying on to the next generation. But they do that. That's how they're trying to do They're doing everything they can to possibly destroy us physically. Now, let's look at it from a sociological standpoint. Uh, people don't realize that when you turn on the TV – that within a few minutes, it literally puts you into an alpha brainwave state. You know, we talked before, we were joked about how people sit there and eat the Doritos with the MSG and mm-hmm. drool on themselves while they're drinking their aspartame-soaked products. And, you know, and they're just, you know, just, they don't even know they're there anymore. They get into the TV so much, they don't even realize that they're seeing that it's probably fiction. Uh, this makes your brainwaves act as though you're in a mild form of hypnosis. It thereby opens your subconscious mind to suggestions. You literally believe, after you watch this a little bit, that you have become part of the movie you're watching or the TV show you're watching. If you start watching movies on transgenderism or homosexuality and they're telling you how good it is, you start to take on that belief system and, then this, and all the other filth that they promulgate through Hollywood. Uh, last week, uh, this is interesting, we went to see that new Jurassic Park movie, which is actually pretty good for, for like the fourth sequel. And uh, we were in there watching and then the uh, so guy, you, know, you guys all know who Ryan Seacrest is. He was he's that guy on um, oh, I guess he was yeah. on American Idol and now right. he's got his own radio show out there in California and he's been suspected or known to be I mean suspected I mean known I mean he is I mean suspected to be a gay and uh, just thought I'd mention that and uh, he was introducing a new ABC Family show about a transgender family he was introducing it I mean about this guy whose father decides he wants to be a woman right and they're showing this on the screen as part of the previews. And I looked at Sharon, and I, I got up in disgust, and I yelled at the studio. I really did. I won't watch this film. And I walked out of the theater. And Sharon's looking at me like, well, that's my husband. And, <laughs> and I walked out. And I did. I really did. I walked out for about 10 minutes, and I did some texting. I watched one. Just, you know, I came back in, all that, was gone, that trash was gone, because I don't want that stuff going into my subconscious brain. They do it with flicker rates and everything else they do it to try to make you think this is okay. And I, I've, I've understand we've always, we've always had cross dressers and gays all the way back to you know wherever all the way back to Genesis chapter six and and you know in Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean look at Bohemian Grove. We've got a whole bunch just like a big you know gay festival according to Nixon when he was out there. And oh by the way, the opening for this year's Bohemian Grove conference with the elite is July the fifth, supposedly the same day as the opening of Jade Helm. I don't know if you guys knew that or not. Fifteenth well, yeah, so, so, uh, is Jade Helm. Uh, yeah, so. that's right. Okay, well, well, that's, said, supposedly that's, that's supposedly that's the that's the most Bohemian Grove would be going on around about the same time. And remember, okay. they like to open up all they like to open up all this power in their in their little rituals they do. Okay. And uh, you know it's so it's, it's so funny. I, you know whatever they want to do, I just don't want to force down my throat or down my family's throat. I don't want to get involved with any of these people. Uh, that's why I really wish the Supreme Court had not gotten involved with this gay marriage stuff. 
I mean, God doesn't recognize gay marriage. We already know that, but we don't want to have it subjected to us, to us and our children and our states. I mean, none of us do. I mean, I don't care what they do. If, they, if the states wanted to vote for this, if you were going to be in Massachusetts, Massachusetts wanted to vote for that, and you wanted to live in Massachusetts, you know, that's their choice as a state. But for the, for the Supreme Court, it looks like probably three people on that Supreme Court are gay. We know that. We know that the, the Roberts is probably gay. Kagan is probably gay. And what's the other one? Uh, the other woman. Sotomayor. And we, and we, yes, that's right. And we we know that they're all you know they're all pro 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 gay. And so you know they really you know those two the two ladies basically need to excuse recuse themselves and not even vote on this. But they're not going to do that. Uh, so spiritually, nobody wants to talk about spiritual things, uh, especially when you bring up the name of Jesus. It's brought up in the conversation. The only time that the globalists want to bring up the name of Jesus is to disparage the name of Christ. They want to say bad things about her, to joke about her, or they have some awful cult thing they show on their movies and they they put a black cross up or some really satanic symbol of what they're doing and and they and they make everybody believe that all Christians are this way. They they wanted to continually disparage the name of Christ, which is absolutely ridiculous, uh, you know. But and nobody but the uh, alternative media wants to talk about Genesis chapter six and the Nephilim. I mean, you know, I remember Chuck Missler started talking about this years ago. Steve Quayle started talking about it. Tom Horn started talking about it. I started talking about it. And what happened in Genesis chapter six? It's the uh, the, the uh, 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 fallen. Yeah, the fallen ones. I mean, the uh, hybrid, the Nephilim. Uh, that's right. Women uh, and, and, and remember the and, and, and remember we talked about this a few a few a few shows ago. We were talking about have you watched that one show Brad Metzler decoded the Spear of Destiny that he's interviewing a guy at the end of the show who worked for the global elite who actually said that they're the children the bloodline of the fallen one of Lucifer himself and they trace their genetics all the way back to Genesis chapter six. And they're the ones that are planning on taking over the world, bringing in their own man into the Holy of Holies when they rebuild the, the temple in Jerusalem, and basically consecrating him and bringing him in as the Antichrist to run the rule of the world. I mean, this is what they're planning on doing. They're following the template of the Bible, which we knew they would do, because it's God's word, and basically it's going to have to happen the way he said it. Uh, and, you know, and, and, and governments in different parts of the world, uh, they don't want you doing any research. I, I remember I was listening to the uh, Tom Horner, one of his shows with Tim Steve Quayle just the other day, and he said when they get around pre-flood artifacts, pre-flood, before the flood, he says they put army personnel around these pre-flood artifacts and these pre-flood areas to prevent them from examining the pre-flood information. Isn't that interesting? Oh, yeah. Because no, because nobody wants to know about the pre, they don't want us to know about the pre endemic civilization. They don't want us to know about what happened with Genesis chapter six. They don't want us to know about the you know all of the, uh, the 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 giants. And remember, Solomon said it so succinctly, you know, and he kind of fell to the wayside for a long time, and he came back to God at the end. But he said, "There's nothing new under the sun." I mean, these guys have been doing this stuff for thousands and thousands of years on this planet. Uh, you know, it looks as though we've had you know advanced civilizations here before, and they've been destroyed. And you know, and that's what they're planning on doing with us again. But I really believe this is going to be the final straw. I really believe this is going to be the book of Genesis all the way through the book of Revelations being taken care of this time. And so, you know, it's, it's just, you know, you need to find out, you know, what happened with Noah. And you need to listen to Steve Quayle and Tom Horn on this and Chuck Missler. You can watch all that stuff on, on online. Uh, we've talked about it in detail before, you know, on y'all show, which I have with you guys. But what we have here is that these fallen angels were – there before, and it says again after the flood. I mean, it means that very sincerely. It means they're, they're, they carried on their mischief again. That's where the giants came from. That David had to fight with Goliath and his brothers, and that's when the Israelites went into the Promised Land and said we were but like grasshoppers, and their eyes are so large. And so there have been accounts of giants throughout history. You say, well, this all sounds all far-fetched and all made up. It really isn't. I mean, they, these, they, the Smithsonian has continually hidden the facts and the truth about what happened whenever they find artifacts that don't, don't match the narrative of the Sabbath and Kabbalists that are trying to keep the history books written sterile like they want us to believe them, and they don't want us to understand that there's a Most High God who's in charge of things, and these guys have been here before, and they messed up the DNA before. Remember, Doug, the Bible says in the... In the, in the book of Genesis, that all the thoughts of all the men were evil all the time in Genesis chapter 6. So their, their DNA was contaminated. You know, it's just we need to understand what happened and, you know, and, and why these people were sacrificing children. Uh, we talked about this in one of your prior, prior shows, how the catecholamines were released in the blood, and the people get high when they drink the people's blood. But I'm not going to get into all that detail again tonight with you guys. Remember, but remember when Ten Gunderson exposed the underground satanic human sacrifice network in L.A. County? 
He was the head of the FBI in L.A. County. You guys can look him up, Ted Gunderson, for the new listeners. And he was the head of the FBI for, for Los Angeles County. He discovered a huge underground network. In fact, it was in the caverns underneath L.A. in which they were sacrificing humans. And, you know, remember, Hollywood is where a lot of the programming of the unconscious and the consciousness of the United States comes through, through these, um, these, these satanic sabotans that are running Hollywood. And, and trust me, their intention and purpose is not to please the Most High God. I mean, that's why we have so much filth in the movies. You can't go to a movie now without just ridiculous amounts of cussing if you go to anything. Even PG-13 is just full of cussing. And, and you know, you, 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 I, I don't mind the action-adventure stuff, okay, the shoot, shooting and all that kind of stuff, as long as it's not real graphic. I don't have a problem with that. But I hate the filthy language they put in some of these movies now. It's just not necessary. And every once in a while, somebody will do a really good movie, and they'll have to throw one or two really bad words in it, I guess, so they don't get a PG rating. And so they just kind of just mess it up. They're constantly doing that. But, uh, you know, but we've seen this, so we, and, we know what, and we know what was going on. With now, now, now let's talk about Jade Helm for a minute, because I want, I've got some things about the Jade Helm, and we want to talk also about what's going on with this Trans-Pacific Partnership that's coming back up for another vote as far as some kind of fast track on it now. Remember, the Sabatain Frankists, the Rothschild Satanists, are numerologist Kabbalists. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that term before. I believe you have, haven't yes. you? Yep. They believe there's hidden coding in words and, and numbers in the Bible, and there's certain things in the stars in the skies that they follow. As far as they do things on certain dates, uh, they have certain holy dates, and everything to them is a number of a celestial calendar, so to speak. When they do things on specific dates and for specific purposes, it's to create as much energy possible in the astral plane, which is the sixth to the twelfth dimension. God's in the thirteenth dimensions. By doing so, it magnifies the effects of the act being done. Plus, they want to maintain as much fear as possible because scared people are easier to control. And uh, here's a list of possible scenarios that I see that may take place this fall. I went through all my research on this, and if you guys want to add a few to them, go ahead. But, you know, we could literally have an EMP, which would produce a Compton effect, and which would, uh, you know, shut the power lines down, shut the power grid down. Or, before martial law, would be declared, you know, people are going to be scared they're going to die. I mean, they're going to run out of food or run out of water or run out of electricity or whatever. These guys, Doug, they could just turn the power off. You know that. They don't, oh, have to, sure. they don't even have to do it. They don't have to do an EMP. They can say there was an EMP and it turned the powers off, and they, they would just shut, start shutting power off, and then, you know, they would just leave, they leave it off for a few months, and would, everything would be a nightmare. Uh, number two, we could have a man-made plague. I mean, we know all the, the Kianima research is being done through all these different universities in Africa. We talked about that in detail when I was done. I did a show with you guys last year. Uh, you know, yep. Ebola was it was a beta test to find out exactly how much fear they could generate with Ebola, uh, how much media coverage they had to give it to find out exactly what it would happen. I mean, if they came back now and said Ebola, Ebola has become a hot spot again in the United States, it's spreading everywhere. People are going to mass panic. They've already been programmed to be that way now with Ebola. Uh, number three, uh, Jade Helm could go hot. And, you know, I'll be honest with you guys. You know, I hope it doesn't. But, you know, they're, they're moving an awful lot of troops in a big hurry all over the country. And I know they're doing military exercises, but they sure seem to be doing a whole lot more troop movement than they are military exercises at this point. I mean, they're, they're literally moving hundreds of thousands of people and equipment pieces and convoys all over the country. It seems to me it's an awful big military exercise to try to figure out how to, you know, control the psyche of the American. Plus, remember, the one thing that really bothers me is, you know, the, is the logo for Jade Helm. It's, they've got that wooden shoe in that logo, and I'm sure you guys have had people talk about this before, which is the same wooden shoe they gave the guys in the concentration camps. And to me, to me it just seems strange that they, they actually put that in there unless it's just another psychop. Uh, you could have ISIS, number four, could bomb something like a, you know, wait, wait, a, wait a mini nuke. Ted, 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 hang on, hang on a second. You're going back to Jade Helm. You know, I don't think we really have to go beyond the fact that uh, where in the Constitution does it allow our, the American military to do what they're doing in this military exercise? I mean, th that should be the conversation stopper right there. The uh, you know our our officials should stand up, our, our local officials should stand up and say, wait a minute, not in our county, not in our state, get out of here. I mean, I mean, you know, thank you for protecting us, you know, uh, under the umbrella of of the American military. However, you don't. I mean. It's it's not really constitutionally uh, uh, it's not a constitutionally protected uh, endeavor. So I mean I just want to throw that in there. I mean really to have a conversation beyond that, um, yeah. Um, 
but but go ahead. Well, no, you know, you, you're absolutely right, Doug. I know my mom told me, and uh, I've told you the story before. You know, she was born in 1916 during World War One, and she saw the entire rise and fall of the Third Reich. And I mean, when she was 20 years old, it was 1936. I mean, she really saw all of it. And then she lived all the way through the war. And then in 1952, she basically escaped post-World War II Germany. My father brought her to the United States. Uh, he married her here, but she was never right mentally from everything that she had seen. And I remember in the early 60s when we had the Cuban Missile Crisis, uh, we lived on Highway 92. Uh, we, and our house was right on the highway, and that was the major thoroughfare from Tampa, McDill Air Force Base, across the state, the Highway 27 went, went straight south to Miami, and they were they were putting a whole bunch of troops down there, you know, in, in Homestead and also down there closer to the Keys in case we had an invasion in Cuba. And I remember for days and days and days and days, all we saw were military convoys going across Highway 92. They were coming from all over the United States, coming down, the, you know, the, the Highway 27 or coming across from McDill or coming down 19 from these other states, and this for all the interstate highway systems had been built. And I remember she just sat out in front of the house and just cried and cried and cried. I mean, I mean, I mean, went hysterical. And she goes, "Oh gosh, it's all starting again because I saw this in Germany with all of these troops." And this was in the 30s. I mean, you remember Germany didn't start the war until the late 30s, and but they had all this troop movement and all this troop buildup throughout the entire 30s since when Hitler came in in 33, and then the Reichstag got burned, and then basically he declared himself Führer, and then he started doing all those things with Kristallnacht and Night of the Long Knives and all the things that he did after that, and then they, then they started just and of course they had been disarmed before Hitler had come in and had everything registered. He knew where all the guns were, and so my mom just said they just went house to house to house house to house all the time with the military troops, if you ever think about Hitler, and they would literally go in, take you and the family away, and I'm not talking about Jews, I'm talking about Christians and Catholics and other people who were who were not, you know, ethnic groups, they were just this general population, and they would right. literally take them away in the middle of the night, the following day a bulldozer would come in and push their houses over and put them into dumpsters, and you know, into, into dump trucks, and then the following day they'd come in and they'd, they'd completely clear the lot and sod it. And within a few days after the, the family disappeared, there was no trace of them. And she said after that happened two or three or four times in a neighborhood, everybody just shut up, and everybody got to do And Hitler just got to do what he wanted to do. See, that's the part of the war that nobody wants to talk about. Now, here we are as, as Christians and as Americans, and now we have the same stuff happening to us all over again. You know, what happened to the Germans, and, you know, and we so criticized the Germans for what they went through and what they allowed Hitler to do. Because, you know, all of the truth of how Hitler took God into power, a lot of that's been obfuscated from what really happened with us. And we just think that German people were just a bunch of warmongers that wanted to run around and, and start wars with everybody. That's simply not true. World War II was started because of the Versailles Treaty that that blithering idiot Wilson put together after World War I, in which subjected Germany to these incredible war reparations that would be in the trillions of dollars in a day's money, which was impossible for them to pay, which completely destroyed the German economy. And then they had to do hyperinflation trying to pay back the war debt. And, of course, the Sabbatain Frankis Kabbalist, you know, Satanists who were in charge of the money supply over there, running the central bank there, they hyperinflated the currency, but they stayed ahead of the inflation curve, and they bought all the blue chip stocks and industry and all the metals, gold and silver. And so they watched the entire middle class and the aristocracy of Germany get destroyed and lose all of their savings and all their money and all of their lands. And this is what happened. This brought, this brought in the seeds for Hitler. But That's right. the United Nations, the, 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 the League of Nations with Woodrow Wilson on the Versailles Treaty, always remember this. This is super important. Everybody listen to me for a second. Germany never lost World War I. They signed an armistice. They weren't defeated. They weren't bombed in the rubble. There weren't even troops really in Germany from other countries. They were all fighting in France. And what happened is Germany was being starved to death because of blockades on their borders. They couldn't feed the, – they, they were all starving. But they never lost the war. They signed an armistice. Suddenly they just signed a piece of paper, and the war ended. And then they put the treaty together after that. And then Germany was made responsible for the entire thing, even though Austria was one of the primary causes because of the Archduke Ferdinand had been assassinated. We've been given a complete line of nonsense of what happened with Germany. Now, in World War II, Germany was defeated. They were utterly destroyed. That's a fact, okay? There's no, there's no, there's no anything on that. I mean, they were, they were bombed in the rubble. In fact, Dresden was bombed. We've talked about it on your show a couple of months before the war was over, and some of the estimates are half a million women and children and old men died in the firebombing of Dresden. You know, and, and Dresden had no, no, no military industry there. It was, just, it was just a really pretty broke city that was completely destroyed except for just a few buildings that are left. Anyway, let's, let's, we got way off topic here. 
I mean, go start on this stuff. I start going nuts on you on this stuff. Well, well you know, I mean, too. look, uh, Ted. I, I think look, people need to hear and really understand that. Even if you're hearing this for the fifth time, you really need to understand this. I believe because what we're seeing today. We didn't get here overnight. We didn't get here, uh, you know, in 2008, all of a sudden, or 2001. This has been brewing, uh, you know, for for uh, a century, more than a century. Well, you, you can take it back as far as you want, but, uh, you know, most Back to recently. the War of 1812. Yeah, well, yeah. It goes back yeah. to the War of 1812. And it goes for because that's when they put the central bank back in from England, basically to take to reassume control of the United States. Andrew Jackson got rid of that, and then the uh, Rothschild <laughs> banking cartel was supporting both sides of the Civil War with Lincoln. And Lincoln yep. basically threw a rent. And I don't care for Lincoln. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a Lincoln fan. But Lincoln was against the central banks, and he was against the Rothschild banking cartel. He started printing his greenbacks, and ended up getting him killed by an agent of the Rothschild bank, who was the, you know John John Wilkes Booth. And so you know, but but Lincoln, there's a really book, there's a book everybody needs to read. read. It's called the the, the real Lincoln, and uh, then you get an idea who. The, yep. Oh yeah, so you know, so you know who Lincoln was. I am no yeah. fan of Abraham Lincoln, but he has a, But number four, what could happen in the fall is ISIS could blow something up. We could have a mini nuke or a dirty bomber, a major city or an airport could be bombed. Uh, that could happen too. That could push us towards martial law. It would and they're prepping. Collapse the stock market. The the media is prepping. By the way, I don't know whether you saw this, Ted. Um, a, a news blurb came out. I think it was yesterday. Uh, early morning uh, programming where they're saying that ISIS has either has obtained or has the capability of obtaining in the very near term uh, a nuclear warhead or nuclear material they were a little bit uh, you know unclear on this um, uh, uh, for a dirty bomb or for a small tactical nuke and they're getting it from Pakistan. The, the, the media, uh, mainstream media is already preparing the, the American public, the West, for this. I just wanted to mention that. I don't know whether you saw that or not, but that's what they're saying. I, I didn't see it, but, 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 that we, but, but, that, but the reality is that there's, the nukes are so tightly controlled, except for the former Soviet Union, some of those satellite states, they had a hard time getting rid of the nukes in there, some of them to disappear, especially a lot of the suitcase-sized bombs. Uh, they so, but the reality—it's not. It's, you just don't go out and buy a nuclear weapon. It's, it's kind of right. like something the CIA kind of knows about. And if it, if they get a nuclear weapon, it's because it's going to be another false flag. That's how I look at it. Uh, exactly. You could have a war in the Middle East, which we already know that could happen. Uh, uh, the for closing of the Straits of Hormuz—that could easily happen with Iran right now. Uh, you could have a loss of the petrodollar world reserve currency status. That could all happen. And see what's interesting to me with all of this stuff—you know—that would put us in a cash society with the mark of the beast. But what I find interesting with all these possible scenarios. They're all not only possible, they're probable. And see, that's why they're bringing us to a perfect storm here. I mean, this is going to be the full onslaught of, of learned helplessness, in which we become so overwhelmed and distraught. Years ago, I remember, Doug, I never felt this before, but this is back in 2004. We had three hurricanes hit our house in six weeks. Now, we haven't had a hurricane hit this place since 1960. So we had gone like 44 years without a hurricane strike. And I personally believe it was, they were using HARP. They were using the weather control systems. I think that they that are by the Polk County where I live that X marks the spot, and they wanted to see what they could do with these storms because the following years when we had Katrina go up into, into uh, you know to uh, New Orleans. And the thing about this is that you know my county marked the spot of these three storms that came over us in six weeks. And every time we turned around, there was another storm coming off the coast of Africa. They were like one after another after another. And by the third storm, we were like. Just shocked. I mean, we were just shell shocked. This is actually happening to us, and that's the learn helpless they talk about. We just didn't know what to do. I mean, my screen room got torn down on the last storm. It was a big. It was a. It was a huge mess. My my property got flooded. All the retention ponds were already full from the two storms. We had trees blowing down all over the place because the ground was already so wet from the prior storms, and. That's what a perfect storm does. That's what weather warfare does. That's what multiple things happening at the same time does to the person's psyche. And see, that's what they're going to do. I really believe that. There's going to be a multiple front here that's going to attack us, and we're going to go, okay, government, save us. Do whatever you need to do. If that means martial law, do martial law. Because it's like the people in Texas a couple of weeks ago when they were deluged with all that flooding. You know, that huge high-pressure zone was over Texas for, for a year. All that drought was going on, and suddenly, you know, there has a, they have all of this harp activity. You can actually go to websites to show you where all the harp activity is taking place. And suddenly, Texas gets into this giant onslaught, this, this huge monsoon stays over there and parks there and floods everything. So they, they, they know they're good. They, we know they control the weather. We know they control storms, and that's one of the great – Force, they call it a force multiplier because it's hard to launch missiles in the middle of a monsoon and, you know, in the middle of a hurricane. 
Uh, number eight, uh, the Rothschild banking cartel is on the ropes. We know that. Globalism, socialism doesn't work. We know that. Um, you've got to look at what's going on now with the, with the Chinese stock market, the 10 to 15 percent drop in the last five days, the Baltic dry index. The velocity of money is way down. Our stock market bubble, the Europe stock market bubble, the bond market, which is already going into free fall, uh, the constant naked shorts of the gold and silver on the markets. Uh, you know, we've got TPP, uh, which is trying to start up again. I think they have that vote again this week, don't they, for that, for that short route through. And, and some of the other things about TPP are uh, you, they're going to try to take away patent protection for certain products and give other corporations additional patent protection so you can hold patents indefinitely. Uh, the Monsanto GMOs, they're going to dictate all food supplies coming into the United States. That's why they don't want to label GMOs because they don't want any exposure on that. That's one of the things in this trade thing is going to allow them to do. And it's going to allow Internet censorship. It's going to they can shut it down any time. They, they can control domain lists. Like my website is healthmasters.com. If they suddenly think they like that website name, they can just take it as a corporate structure. And I, there's nothing we can do about it. So there's all kinds of things about the TPP that nobody wants to talk about. But they, uh, they really, the globalists really felt that they could just ram this thing completely down our throat. And again, this reeks of the Rothschild cartel and the Federal Reserve Act of 1913 and what happened to the United States. Like you said, this has been going on for well over 100 years in the United States. The entire idea of TPP is so heinous uh, that, the, uh, and the president of, that our president and 11 other countries uh, were signing on to a totally secret trade deal, a huge power grab that no one in any of these countries knows anything about. It's, it's, kind of, it's insanity. You know, as Sessions said that the, you know it was it was it was it was basically a living agreement, which means it could change any time at anything at any place, and there's nothing anyone could do about it. And again, it gives them Rothschild cartels more power, higher prices. They've already taken over the government, so they don't even have to worry about that. But they would they would be able to avoid any kind of jurisdiction by the government. Uh, they just didn't. But, they, but thank God that the thing didn't pass on its initial blow through. But <laughs> the failure of this bill is epic. You know, it's epic, and we can keep it from going back through again. But remember, the Rothschilds always love false flags, and they always love to punish the people that come against them. Remember the Russian czar, we talked about this a few minutes ago, with the Civil War. The Russian czar helped to blockade the southern states during the Civil War, which interfered with the Rothschilds taking over the southern states. And then uh, they were so angry, the Rothschilds got evil with them in 1917 when they killed the whole royal family of Russia. And you know these Sabatine Frankists, the Rothschild Satanists, are so evil to the court, Doug, that they they just, they just always are imposing false flags of wars. Remember the, what the what the one what Rothschild mother said? She goes, "There is never a war unless my son wants there to be a war." And did the people not read this stuff, Doug? Yeah, you know, to hear that now, I, I've heard that comment before, and, and and folks, please, this is not. I mean, listen to what Ted is saying. This is not. Uh, Conspiracy theory, kookiness, woo-woo stuff. This is documented. I mean, th- th- how crazy is this? I mean, or I should say, how insane and, and evil are these people? Uh, it's it's unbelievable. Well, well no, it's, 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 you know, well, you know, I mean, it's just the GMO foods. I mean, just that. With a, yeah. with a 50% colony collapse last year of the honeybee population that are eating these pesticide corn crops that are pesticides. I mean, the corn is actually a pesticide. With all of the problem now we have with autism, they're saying by 2025 that 50 percent of the children are going to have autism. Doug, I mean, does anybody not read anything? Is it, is it what, what part of this is okay with anybody? I mean, did they just see? They look at us as goyim, as cattle to be used and harvested, to be brought to slaughter, and just we're just a commodity to them. That's right. how they see us. They see us as soulless creatures, and that's how they look at us. This thing, got, you have to go back. Remember, Paul said. This is not a battle of flesh and blood, but of principalities in these high places and all of these wars that are going on in the heavenlies. And, you know, we think he's speaking metaphorically when he talks about that, and he's not. You know, Paul's being very, very clear with us when he says that. He goes, you know, this is something that's in the unseen realms. He goes, this thing has been going on for a long time, and we have been basically just pawns in the game. And it's that really good book that everybody needs to read that was written. It's called Pawns in the Game. It was written back in the 60s. I think William Carr was Carr. Great writer. Yep. Yep. Yeah, well, William Carr. It, got, I, if you read that book, that'll give you a better insight to what's going on. And you can also go to Henry McCow's website, and he'll talk about some of the stuff that's going on, too, with, this, with the Sabbatain Frankist Kabbalah Satanists and who they are and what they are and what they do. But these guys, nobody understands this. They're not playing games here with us. They're playing for blood. It's like that old movie uh, Tombstone back in the 90s with Kurt Russell. 
And the guy goes, well, you know, we started the game, we never finished, we're supposed to be playing for blood. You know, and that's what they said at the one that very end, towards the end of the movie. And that's what they're doing with us. This isn't a joke to these guys. Their, their whole game here, their whole point is global dominion, domination. If they can't control the earth, if they can't control us, if they can't learn how through their genetic testing to develop and how to make souls in people, then they're going to do transhumanism. So they can try to, quote, live forever in a machine. And if they can't do all that, they're just going to destroy all of us. It's not a question of, you know, are they trying to make things better for themselves just to kill us off? No. There's nothing positive about a chemtrail. There's nothing positive about spraying barium and aluminum in the atmosphere and all of us having to breathe it. There's nothing positive about completely polluting the entire food supply with genetically modified foods. There's nothing positive about that. There's nothing positive about polluting the entire atmosphere of the northern hemisphere with this Fukushima filth that's coming across the ocean in California and the United States now and the death of the Pacific Ocean. They don't care. That's, that's the one thing if anybody will understand who's listening to me tonight. I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm not trying to be anything, but I'm telling you this. These guys don't care. They don't care if they kill you. They don't even care if they die. All they care about is their agenda, which has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. This is what they want to do. They hate God so much. They got so ticked off at him, apparently, when he made Adam and Eve, and he created them in his image, and he gave them a soul, and they got so angry about it, they've done everything they possibly can now since the beginning of time, since Genesis, to try to destroy everything and to destroy the works of God. They did it all all the way through Genesis chapter 6, if you read the book of Enoch, it goes into detail on that, until they completely contaminated the gene pool because they were so angry at God. And then finally they realized that they were in a mess, that they had basically destroyed them, themselves as far as getting back into heaven. They tried to hire Enoch as an advocate to try to talk to God to get them back in his good graces, and it just didn't work. And see, these guys, they know that this is not something that's going to end. This is going to go on for eternity. They're not going to allow it to go down you know, the way we want it to. They're going to do everything they can to fight it. And then we get to name it, claim it, blab it, grab it, self-serving evangelists on TV who say, send me money and you'll be blessed. And they don't even preach repentance. They don't even preach Jesus Christ. They don't even preach salvation. All they preach is a feel-good message, and they refuse to even talk about anything like this. That's why I like Chuck Baldwin. He's getting more and more bold. I love you know, Pastor McGuire. He does such an excellent job. I love Coach Dobbemeyer and Pastor Dobbemeyer. He does a good job. I love Rodney Howard Brown because these guys are out there in the trenches. Oh, which reminds me, we are doing that seminar in, in D.C., yep. On starting on July the 4th, I think, through the 11th. So I'm going to be there. I know you guys are coming, too. I'll give you the dates when I'm speaking in a few minutes. Okay. But I just, Ted, Ted we, let's make sure that we uh, we allot enough time to talk about uh, the uh, uh, event in D.C., okay, Celebrate America. Let, let's make sure we do that. Because... Re- Re- Revival.com is where you get all the information. Well, that's right. Okay. All right. Okay, well, have, I'm sorry. I got, I, got, I got all carried away. Let me, let me go back to what I was going to do. Let me go back go to my notes here real quick. I, I love doing shows with you guys because I never stay on notes anyhow. I just, <laughs> I just <laughs> use an index card because I don't, I, don't, I don't stay on the notes. Okay. Uh, they love false – the Rothschilds, they love the false flag wars. Uh, the, TPP, the TPP is going to be reintroduced, which we know it is. I think the vote's coming up again this week. We have to maintain vigilance, continue to call the senators. Remember, globalism, communism, like a cannibal eating himself. I mean, it, just, it, just, it destroys itself. It puts government in the hands of mega corporations. This is fascism again, such as Monsanto. They're given such power and immunity that they, can, they literally kill the consumers of their own product with immunity. I'm going to repeat that. Monsanto is literally killing the consumers of their own products with immunity. I mean, the government's been given, they've been given immunity. Uh, the, the system self-implodes after a period of time, which is what the Satanists want to do. They want to destroy God's creation by destroying mankind, because if they can't win, they're going to just take us all with them. Uh, the Rothschild House of Cards is coming down. We now know about the chemtrails. I mean, or the, we should call it geoengineering, according to Dane Winnington. I also believe that the HARP system that they were using as far as the putting the power through the antenna arrays and focusing the energy in the ionosphere, I think that's old technology now. I believe they shifted it to a satellite-based system now, which is much more effective. I think that the HARP stuff now is, in fact, the, government, the Air Force, they said they're closing it down. They finished their research with that. And I personally believe they shifted it to a more advanced satellite system in which they're doing the same thing, but, it's there, but, there, but they can actually be much more accurate with it. We know about the chemtrails. We know about the geoengineering. We know about the Bilderbergers. We know about the TPP. We know about Bohemian Grove. Uh, we, the people, are reaching a tipping point. I mean, the sheeple are actually starting to wake up. Uh, we are literally forcing the legislatures in Washington 
into stopping the TPP by our phone calls and our letters and our threats of voting them out. This, is, by the way, is a huge defeat for Obama and the globalists if we can keep this thing from going through without getting fast-tracked. Obama was basically put in the White House by the Rothschild banking cartel, Doug, to destroy our country and sign over this entire country through the TPP. These guys have already got their fiat money magic Luciferian money system in place, but they wanted to destroy everything else about the country. And I believe Obama was put here for that and for the Obamacare. That was his mandate. Uh, you know, he was mentored by Brzezinski, the you know Rockefeller's flunky back in 2008. We know that. This is why he was put into office. He was told pretty much, "Don't mess this up. You've got to get TPP through." I mean, look at look at Obama. He looks awful. He's stuttering more. He's basically freaking out. He's got to, he, he can't even get off teleprompter anymore. Uh, he knows who his boss is. He knows that he's a, that the Luciferians are running the place in this country, and he has a pure evil behind the curtain. It's like the Wizard of Oz. He knows who's behind the curtain. These are not good people. But uh, but Doug, but Doug, uh, you know, the, re- the thing about this is that the resistance has finally arrived. I mean, praise God, even as dumbed down as the people are, and all the sheep are starting, starting to stir, I mean, look how big your show's getting. I mean, the patriots are actually starting to wake up. I know Debbie, Debbie, uh, Debbie uh, Kidd, she wrote a really interesting email this morning. I got it. In fact, I, I, I answered her. I sent her an email back on it. And she said uh, the whole thing, she was really tearing into Rand Paul because of his wanting to still go with a flat tax instead of getting rid of the Federal Reserve System. And Rand Paul is playing more politics up there than his dad did. And I wrote her a letter, and she was saying she doesn't understand what's going on. And I, then I told her, I said, the problem is stupidity. And I told Debbie, I said, you're right with every word you wrote. I said, but the American people are so dumbed down with statins, pesticides, estrogen mimickers, BPA, fluoride, GMO, aspartame, Prozac, psychiatric drugs, immunizations, learned helplessness, Stockholm syndrome, chemtrails, television, pornography, immorality, the name it, claim it, claim it, preachers, common core, illiteracy, gender confusion, Hollywood, racial hatred, radical feminism, affirmative action run amok, communists and Nazi infiltration, the bought off lying congressmen and greed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So regardless of what we do, the majority will never attempt to understand, nor can they understand because they've been dumbed down. Their mantra is basically this, as long as I have a six-pack and a TV, I am good. <laughs> That's how they feel. That's why I sent Debbie that letter back today, and I think I kind of summed it all up. But the point is we don't need the majority to change this, Doug. That's what nobody understands. We don't need a 55 or 60% of the population awake. 10 or 15% of us awake, which we can do, is going to wake the population up. You know, because we'll be telling our friends, telling our friends, telling our friends, and voting these people out. So that's the whole key: is we've got to continue to work together as a team. I mean, you know, look at look, look at that Bilderberger meeting uh, last week at the Alpen Hotel in Austria, and such yeah. unbelievable security that they have. They know that this security has to be like that because they know the crash is coming, and they don't want people in there with recorders or cameras and talking about this. I mean, this is like an animating contest that you know that Jefferson wrote about. I mean, that what makes us what we are right now because we're we're alive and we're in one of the most exciting times of this country's history. Uh, you know what we can become. Remember, remember the remember the line from uh, the, the, from the movie The Gladiator: "What we do will echo for all eternity." And that says more now than anything else as far as what we as Americans can do right now. We don't have to follow the path of fascism like Nazi Germany did. We don't have to. Remember, we still have our guns. They can't just come in and take us away. They can't haul us off in the middle of the night like this. They can't do that unless they try to take the guns. You know, but we have to realize that there are a lot of people who still think that many who believe the government is going to global is going to rescue us from this whole this globalism stuff. Uh, that's like swimming with a 18 foot or 20 foot crocodile or trying to talk to a T Rex in that <laughs> movie I watched. You can't really negotiate with these guys. I mean. We have a we have sometimes we'll get these ga- alligators in our lakes down here that are 18 and 20 feet long. I mean, if one of these things can grab a kid or grab you, you can't do anything about it. They weigh over a thousand pounds. You know, it's the government's collusion with the Rothschilds and the global corporations that's a problem. These corporations, the pharmaceuticals, the media, they're all interlocking corporate directorships. I mean, the Rothschild global corporation cartel controls 60 percent of the total GDP of all the corporations in the world. That's how big they are. I mean, they, but they, they, they don't really – But they, they, the people that they depend on, they literally are destroying. And that's why the Bilderberger meeting was running so scared this year. I, by the way, I've been at that Alpen Hotel in Austria. I've traveled over there before. I've stayed there for a couple of nights. That's a really nice place. There's like a little two-lane road going up to it, so it was very, very easy to uh, monitor who was going up there. That's right. That's on top – by the way, that's in the Austrian Alps. 
and uh, it's very, 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 very secluded. It's one of the most beautiful hotels in the world that you can ever go there, by the way. If anybody wants to go there, it's pretty nice. <laughs> okay. Uh, they also know that they've been um, fooled. The American people know they've been fooled, uh, that, that, you know, and the, and the Rothschilds know that they've been exposed. And so, uh, and so now it's going to be interesting because the, bureau- the, 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 the bureauc- bureaucracy is so immense and their morals are so compromised because of Luciferianism that uh, they know that without a night of the long knives to purge out the people that are awake, uh, they can't they can't get rid of what they've done because we the people have said you know enough. I mean that's the whole thing. If we can avoid a night of the long knives in the United States, and for those of you who don't know that, those that's the night when Hitler came in and killed a bunch of the people that opposed him politically, and a lot of people helped him get the power, which is what these globalists always end up doing. The people help put them in power who have the power to take them back out. They want to make sure they get rid of them. So if guys, you know, this is one something that Alex Jones says is true. Troops, if you're listening to the show tonight and you're American soldiers, you know, if you do what they're telling you to do is you start firing on American citizens, please be aware that they're going to bring mercenaries in to take you guys out too. Uh, and the same thing with the police officers that are going to go along with this. I mean, we've all got to stand in the aggregate, especially people that are in leadership and in control, Doug, and not allow these globalists to come in and do what they say they're going to do to us. It's just something we have to say no. We have to say, like the German word, genug, enough. We're not going to let you do guys anymore. What do you think about that, Doug? No, yeah, you know, Ted, and and I heard, I want to say this uh, before I forget. I heard from a police officer from Cleveland. I I won't uh, mention her name. I met her. Joe and I, I think, met her, but I personally spoke with her in uh, Orlando. And she sent me an email. She said, you know, I want you to know I'm a Christian, and I know, you know, which side I'm on, um, among other things. But the fact is, uh, uh, kind of straying away from your question a tad here, we, speaking to the, poli- to the police, speaking to the military, speaking to the people involved here, there are people who are watching on the inside or not saying anything and are saying, you know, or who are thinking, we, we're we going to side with the American people when it when the time comes. So we have an element there and we should be very thankful and gracious and um, grateful, I should say, for these this element who knows what's going on, who can see it, but are not speaking out y- just yet, but will you know at the, at the appropriate time. I, I guess. I, but, but the other on the, on the flip side of this, uh, oh, I think I strayed away from your question. But uh, you know what? We're at the top of the hour, Ted. Joe. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. With that, we will take okay. the top of the hour break. You're listening to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this Monday, June 22nd, 2015. Our guest tonight is Mr. Ted Breuer. Hit to the Hagman and Hagman Report on this, the 22nd day of June, 2015. Our guest tonight, good friend, Mr. Ted, Dr. Ted Breuer, and I'll tell you something. His Well, his website is healthmasters.com. That's healthmasters.com, folks. Please bookmark that site. Sign up for his newsletter. And let me, let me just say this, okay? I'm not... I, well, Dr. Brewer can't make any medical claims. I certainly am not uh, qualified to make any medical claims, but I can tell you this. You can take uh, supplements, vitamins, you know, from the that you buy at uh, the grocery store or the drug store or the discount store or wherever, and you can take them all day long. And I mean this. However, and and feel just as crappy and and just and have no just don't have any effect on you. Or you can do what I do, and I take the vitamins and supplements from HealthMasters dot com from Doctor Ted Brewer, and I, I promise you, you will notice the difference. Not only will you notice it, your if you follow, if you go to the doctor on a regular basis, and don't say anything to your doctor, just well, I shouldn't say that. I, I, do what you do what you have to do, because some medicines actually uh, react with uh, supplements or vice versa. But I, I guess what I'm saying to you is this: there's a difference in the type of product, and Dr. Burrow's products are the best I've ever taken in my life, and they've made a difference in my life. And I wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. And for that, I, I, I just want to say thank you, Dr. Ted Brewer, for everything you've done. And, um, and, and I mean that. I, it's just You just cannot buy that type of – you just can't buy health. I mean, you, you, know, you know what I mean? It's, and health is so important. And, boy, you know health is important when you are in bad health or poor health. 
and you can't do what you want to do. You know, the, the mind is willing, but the body isn't. You, you flip that around, or, you know, you, you fix that, I should say. And, boy, what a difference it makes. So I want to thank you personally. And I, and I also want to say this. I want to acknowledge your intellectual honesty in dealing with the current events that we have. This is not false flattery. This is just matter of fact. And thank you, sir, for being well, our thanks. guest. Well, thanks, Doug. I, well, I, I know I love you. I love you guys. I mean, you, you guys are like brothers to me. I mean, you and I are, well, you're younger than I am, Doug, so, and your son, you know, he's like, you know, like a serious kid for me, you know, and I just I enjoy hanging out with you. I believe that you'll be speaking in uh, Washington on Monday and Tuesday night. I think that's going to be July the 6th and the 7th, and I'm going to be speaking there on July the 9th and 10th in Washington, D.C. I'll be doing that evening along with Doug and, along with Doug. Uh, Rodney and Howard Brown and his wife. So we've got a lot of. We're going to have fun in Washington this year, and and we really hope that it goes well up there. I mean, we really do, and we're going to have fun with that. And so uh, Rodney's spending a lot of money to go up there. He's spending, I think, almost a four, he has almost a four hundred thousand dollar budget. They've uh, they've given out. They've talked. They've worked with over six hundred churches and two hundred fifty local churches. They've given out over one hundred and fifty seven thousand tickets to the event. So this is a pretty big deal. Now these tickets are free, so you can come in there. Any, you don't have to have a ticket. You can still get in for free, and uh, you know. And so we'd love to meet you guys, and we'd love to meet you there when we're when we're all speaking and hanging out. So that that'll be a lot of fun too. So if you guys can make it, you know, who are listening tonight, please try to do so. Also, what I want you to do while you're there is schedule time with your congressmen and your senators and your legislators and all the stuff in Washington or with their aides or with somebody, and tell them how you feel. Tell them that you're, you, know, you, you really are concerned about this country. You're concerned about the Federal Reserve Bank. You're concerned about them not being audited. You're concerned about what's going on with Jade Helm. You're concerned about what's going on with all of it. And just give them a whole list and say, you know, guys, look, this is no good. We you know we got to do this together, and you guys have to work with us as a country, and you have to represent our wishes and we can't be starting more wars in countries for absolutely no reason. If you'll just tell your congressman that and let them hear from the grassroots. And then you also get that. We'll cover that in a few minutes. I've got the 14 tips that we can do as far as uh, surviving the oncoming stuff. So let me finish my rest of my notes, though, for the show sure. tonight, though, for the first part of the show. So the people have said enough. Uh, the very corporations that have been created by these globalists to plunder and take over foreign countries and you know, in foreign lands and enslave everybody are destroying themselves, literally. Again, it's a cannibal eating itself. The 10% consumer base that actually buys all of this junk around the world is, you know, because you got to remember, you know, Europe only has a few hundred million people. You know, the United States has like 300 million people. And, you know, in China, the people there are so poor still that they're not the big portion of the consumer base. Neither the people in India or in Pakistan or Bangladesh or the Philippines. So the 10% of the actual consumers that are buying all of this junk out of China is shrinking. It's getting it's getting messed up. It's getting smashed. I mean, the, the uh, crash is coming. Uh, you know, the the U.S. SNR proved that globalism and communism doesn't work. It, you know, it's a non-sustaining model because people, when they realize they don't have to work to get paid, they just do that. The technocrats and the uh, and, and they're building bigger and bigger you know robots and robotics, which are getting more and more people out of the factories and which are going to make more and more people lose jobs. I mean, Henry Ford taught us that when he was building his Model T. He said, look, he says, I've got to make the Model T cheap enough that the people that are working for me can buy this car. And see, that, that's what they don't understand. They're destroying the very people that are supposed to buy their stuff. It's like the pesticides are using the props to destroy the insects we talked about earlier. I mean, these honeybees are being poisoned by the insecticides and the aluminum and the, and the sprays they're putting in to the insecticides and also in the air. And nobody's realizing that they're destroying the world's food supply, which I believe they are doing on purpose. You know, I guess the DARP and the transhumanism is just going to take over, according to these guys, and machines will start manufacturing stuff for other robots and for other machines. Uh, that would make sense for the current population scenario as far as that's what they really want to do with the eugenics protocol. But there's the, pro the problem with this is that the Hitler – that this protocol – is going to fail again. It's already had failed with Hitler with the eugenics program that was started with Darwinism back in the 1800s. And, and when the U.N. peacekeeping forces show up, or perhaps all of these things are going to happen all at once, creating learned helplessness, which we mentioned earlier with the Hegelian dialect on steroids, if this is the planned society, Doug, their perfect world of robots living forever, uh, it's just another total lie from Lucifer is all it is. And again, how can the global corporations make a profit if they kill the population? I mean, what are they thinking? Are they are they that crazy, Doug? I mean, is that what, is that what this is all about? 
<laughs> yeah, I think that, well, okay, possessed by the uh, spirit of Lucifer, by Lucifer himself. Yes, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. And, and it's it's all about the blood. It's all about the DNA, as you referenced in Genesis six. That's right. And and it's you know it's it's a demographic. Uh, it's a, a game of numbers. It's a numbers game at this point. Um, the uh, Keynesian, uh, the seed of Cain and the uh, Cain lineage, shall we say? Um, you know, uh, you know, attempting to. Uh, uh, destroyer DNA, and and they're doing it through the methods that you just described. Absolutely, that's true. That's true. And also, uh, here, here's 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 14 things you can do. This is a, I'm going to paraphrase some of the stuff that a young guy by the name of Paul Phillips wrote online, and I, I liked what he said. But I'm going to make a couple of changes in it. But I'm going to kind of give I want to give him credit for it as far as part of it. He said that we need to stop giving, and I've said this a hundred times, and so have you, that we need to stop watching the mainstream corporate lies through TV. I mean. You have to learn to tell the difference between disinformation and truth. You know, back when we were in high school, in junior high school, back, gosh, back in the 60s, I remember, Doug, we had a civics teacher. His name was, you know, Mr. Edwards, and the guy had been in the Marine Corps. And boy, that guy could swing a paddle. He was unbelievably strong. <laughs> We see, we, yeah, and yes, we used to actually get spanked in school when I was a kid, which was actually a good thing because it kept me in line without Ritalin. And I'm sure had I been in school back then, they would have stuck me on Ritalin and drag, would drug my brain down, which that's the only thing they can do now because if you spank them now, you get sued. They have to drug everybody into a stupor, so the parents need to take control of that. I mean, how much of this 20 million people taking Ritalin and Adderall, how much of that has to do? Why, do we, why are we not in uprage about that? Okay, that's, we should be marching in the streets of Washington just about that. But again, you know, people figure, well, as long as the government's paying for the drugs to the school system, who cares? And that's the attitude. But we have to realize that we have to stop watching the mainstream corporate news. Now, just the other day, Brian Williams was being interviewed, and he apologized for being a liar. And now they're bringing him back on the NBC News as a news agent. Have you seen that? Yeah, I did. They're bringing yep. Brian Williams back. <laughs> I can't even believe it. And I'm like, Really? I mean, really? Are you really going to do that? I guess they had spent so much money uh, getting him in the mainstream, you know, training him to do what he does, that they wanted him to come forward and apologize for what he did. And as a Christian, I forgive him. But the point is, he's lied so much about other stuff, too, that he didn't he didn't make clean on. And then finally they asked him, they said, are there any other things that you want to take care of or, or tell that you did before we go any further? And he goes, well, I've already contacted several people about a few things. And he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm clear now. And I'm like, what the heck is that? What does that even mean? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, number two on this list is stop voting for any of the major political parties. I disagree with that, okay? And here's what I say. Don't vote for the political party that you're, you've been normally affiliated with if that candidate doesn't represent your values. This is really important, Doug. I want everybody to listen to me on this. The Republicans and the Democrats are pretty much just sock puppets for Satan right now. That's all they are. You know, you have to look at the other people that are coming in who are independent voters or in, independent candidates. Uh, just because, you know, they're not a Democrat or Republican or they don't you, you – don't do that. I mean, I mean, remember Chuck Baldwin got just slammed hard out there in Montana – because he he promoted a Democratic candidate who was a better choice than the Republican candidate they had, you know Chuck being a Christian got basically eviscerated eviscerated by the conservative press because he had done that. The point is this, you know I talked to a friend of mine years ago. His name was Van Green. He was a former NFL football player. He worked out here at the house with me. I've got a gym here at the house. He worked out with me for about seven years at the you know our little workout area here. And I remember he asked I asked him I said you know do you always vote Democrat? He goes always. And I said, why do you do that? He goes, well, I'm a Democrat. I said, Van, I said, you're a preacher. I said, they believe in abortion. They they, they believe in all this stuff that's opposed to what you believe as a Christian. <laughs> and he goes, he, and he goes, well, the Democrats are the ones that are taking better care of us. In other words, giving them more money, I guess. And I told him, I said, I said, Van, you can't do that. You've got to learn that you have to vote what's right. You've got to vote the candidate, not the political party. So guys, listen to me on that. Plus, also, everybody needs to get involved in a grassroots political campaign. They really need to be involved with all of that. They need to be working with their local school boards to get these liberals off the school boards. They need to be working with their local you know, city commissioners and all the different things. And, and if you can, run for these things. If we can pick it back up at the very basic level and work our way back to the system with really good qualified candidates, we can really change things. It's not going to happen overnight, but we've got to change the country. Either we, either, My mom used to always say, one little phrase she always said, she always said it in German, but I'll say it to you in English. She always said, if you give up, you lose. And she goes, I guess that was trained, <laughs> she was trained by the, by the Hitler regime to say that, that you can never, ever give up. 
But I'll give her credit, though. She had a dogmatic determination in her life that she never gave up on anything. She pushed, pushed, pushed all the time. And that's the truth. That's what we have to do. We can't give up on this new world order. We just can't lay, roll over and pretend like we're dead and let them do what they want to do to us. We can't do it. So vote for the candidate who best represents your beliefs. That's number two. Uh, Number three, the guy says you need to detoxify yourself. I believe that, too. I believe that you need to be getting poisons out of your system. You know, every single day I sit and have a foot soak in magnesium chloride bath salts that we sell at Health Masters. It gives, your body has over 300 chemical reactions that take place with the use of magnesium. Magnesium is one of the principal components of plants and chlorophyll. And without magnesium in the plant, the, the body can't even, or the, the, the plant can't even produce sunlight. The same thing is true. With, the, with magnesium in the body, if you can't, you can't have proper energy production in the body without sufficient quantities of magnesium. The problem with that is it's very difficult to get it in your diet and very difficult to get it in supplement form. It's easier to absorb it through your skin. My wife was, in fact, she came on a couple months ago and talked about that and how her hands, she couldn't even close them anymore because of, uh, because of inflammation in her hands. And it also for bone spurs, and she had spinal stenosis, and she started doing this magnesium soak, and we have magnesium deodorant that doesn't have any aluminum chlorhydrate in it, which is phenomenal stuff. And since we, sold, since we did that last show with you guys, I think we sold more deodorant, I don't, Doug, <laughs> yeah, their product, because, because everybody uses it. And everybody's putting oh, this yeah. aluminum chlorhydrate, antiperspirant deodorant, put, pumping all this aluminum in to their pores and, and so 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 make sure you get a really good magnesium product we have that at health masters also it's at the front page we have if, an if entire just, magnesium kit if, if i can if i can just say this my wife is uh uh switched to your deodorant and uh uh she has noticed the difference uh, i'm not going to go any further i'll just say this it's it's worth every penny and more uh especially for the ladies okay just Trust me. Well, and, and plus, remember last the last time we were on with you guys, I had, and I and I it just slipped my mind. There's a huge correlation between aluminum and aluminum chlorohydrate deodorants and breast cancer in women. Huge correlation. You can look it up online. The aluminum actually increases the risks of breast cancer in women. So you don't want one of the primary ingredients of your deodorant to be aluminum chlorohydrate. You don't want that. And now we're finding out that a lot of these other natural deodorants have all kinds of other chemicals in them that we don't want. And so uh, the one that we developed is really, really good. It has all kinds of different oils in it, and it does a really good job. And it also has the magnesium in it. And that's the one we, I use. And down here in Florida, gosh, it's ridiculous down here, especially as hot as they've been doing. The day they sprayed it so heavily with the chemtrails, I guess they didn't want it to rain. And that we ended up uh, we ended up having no rain like the last four or five days, and today was one of those blistering days where the erratic temperature runs up to about 180 degrees, and the house doesn't want to cool off all night, and you know, and so you're taking two or three showers a day. So if you're not using some type of deodorant, you know, if you're working outside or doing things, I was outside doing some yard work today. It's awful, you know. You start not smelling as well as you always want to smell. And the problem is you've, you've got to use something that does not contain aluminum in it because, it because of the breast cancer incidents with women. And Sharon now can close her fist. She's either pulling weeds tonight. I looked at her and I said, Sharon, please don't pull weeds. Said, That's how you hurt your hands the last time. She goes, Ted, I feel so good. I feel like I'm 25 years old and she's 58 years old. She goes, my energy's through the roof. I'm going to pull some weeds because she's working at her mom's house. She lives behind us. And so it's, it's, been, it's pretty exciting to see my wife actually have the physical ability to be out there in the heat and actually working in the yard at the age of 58 and doing a great job and out, actually outworking the kids. So it's the magnesium soak is what she said did it. And I tell you what, that's the only thing that we really changed differently in our diet or our nutrition protocol, and it's made a huge difference in us too. So the detox, and also when you first start doing it, you'll see the water gets really, really dirty because it starts pulling stuff out of your body. So it's really important that you avoid any toxins when you're doing all this. And avoid the chlorine and the fluorine and all the stuff we've talked about so many times and the bromines. And make sure you take a really good potassium iodide supplement. We're now carrying a potassium iodine product that's also got the atomic iodine in it, which is phenomenal. Always make sure you drink distilled water. Stay away from plastics. Uh, you can use reverse osmosis also. We do sell distillers at healthmasters.com. I've been using distilled water for many, many years, for 30-something years. You need to eat organic food. And I know that the GMO food is a lot cheaper, but you just got to bite the bullet on this one. You've got to realize that the GMO food is so bad for you and the way it changes your epigenetics that you really, really, really need to spend the extra few dollars on the organic fruit and vegetables and the seeds and the nuts. And especially with dairy products, don't ever use non-organic butter or non-organic milk. And when you buy milk, make sure it's whole milk because a lot of times they use chemicals to, do, to strip it apart. Use whole milk and don't get milk that's homogenized, and make sure that it's natural. That's what you want to do, get the organic milk and organic butter. It's because of the butter fat really, really has a tendency to take a lot of the chemicals and, and, and concentrate, especially the hormones. 
You also need to avoid all kinds of junk foods. Uh, you know, GMO foods, again, should be avoided. You need to avoid all of the potato chips. Avoid cooking with microwaves or aluminum pots and pans, which or, or, or even Teflon, which is super poisonous. Uh, don't use and cook foods at real, real high temperatures for real long periods of time. Uh, use natural organic personal care products like our deodorant. And we have some really good shampoos and stuff we have online, too, that really work well. Uh, you need to avoid as much electromagnetic energy as you possibly can. What I try to do is every single night, and everybody, please listen to me for a second on this. I mean, I'm, I know I'm being a little bit redundant on some of the stuff I'm saying, but please, at nighttime, unplug your Wi-Fi router in your house. Don't sleep with it on in your house. Unplug it. You don't need to be yeah. sleeping in a bath of electromagnetic energy all night. The pineal gland sees that energy as light, and it doesn't work properly and doesn't release enough melatonin because it's, it goes right through the brain, right through the skull, hits the pineal gland. The pineal gland sees it as light coming in because there's energy coming into the pineal gland, and it won't allow proper sleep patterns to develop. It won't allow sufficient quantities of melatonin to be released by the pineal gland. And also remember, the pineal gland gets calcified by the fluoride, and so there's all kinds of things we're going to talk about in a few minutes with different foods you can eat to decalcify the pineal gland, including taking vitamin K2, which is really, really good at decalcification, especially for bone spurs and arthritic calcium spurs in the body. So, okay, now the next thing on the list we want to do, we need to avoid the EMPs, avoid vaccines and vaccinations. We haven't even really talked about that tonight. Guys, I wrote a whole book on this back in, I think, 2001. It's called Maximum Solutions to ADD, Autism, and Learning Disabilities in Children. Again, I was about 14, 15 years ahead of the curve, and I warned what was going to happen with everything they're doing. But remember, the vaccines are not the only problem that's causing the autism. A lot of this is being done because of the GMO foods and because of the glyphosate, the Roundup. To avoid using glyphosate, I know it's difficult to control weeds, especially if you've got driveways, et cetera, et cetera. I fight it constantly. I've learned that we use a salt solution, and you combine it with a vinegar, and it does a pretty good job of killing and controlling weeds. You just have to make sure you rinse your equipment out really well because it will cause a corrode, car to corrode very quickly. But remember, you don't need to spray glyphosate or pesticides anywhere that your kids are going to be walking or traveling or anything like that. And also remember this, that the glyphosate is sprayed at almost all crops, including oats and wheat and corn, about three or four days before harvest, not a week before harvest, to, to dry out the crop, to increase the, the yield per acre but you're soaking these foods down in glyphosate, and that's one of the primary causes, again, of autism because these kids are eating all of these foods that have been soaked in glyphosates. It's destroying the intestinal tract, the ability of the body to absorb nutrients. It's causing brain damage. It's causing a massive increase in autism. So stay away from vaccines, especially the flu shots, because the flu shots now, especially the multivial flu shots, still contain thimerosal. Remember, all the vaccines still contain aluminum adjuvants, I went to the doctor's office the other day, and I was getting a vitamin C IV last week. And I said, oh, they were talking about their tetanus shot. Now they, have, they, have, now they don't even have tetanus anymore. They have the tetanus and diphtheria shots together. So they're trying to force you to take the shots just to get a tetanus shot. And I said, could you bring me the vial? And they brought me the vial, and it didn't have aluminum in it, but it contained aluminum as an adjuvant. I mean, it's around on the label. It contains aluminum. So now you're injecting a neurotoxin directly into your bloodstream when you take these different types of you know, injections. So I just say keep your house clean. Keep your kids on vitamins and supplements. We've got, a, we've got a chewable vitamin, Doug, that's so good for kids. We can't even open it up in the office, or we, the adults, go in there and eat the things all day long, and they're gone in two days. They, they taste that good. Uh, it's true. It's true. Uh, and and, and don't, don't be getting into the military and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, if, hey, you ha- if you can, find a bio- uh, yeah, well, 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 Let me interrupt you for a second here because you were talking about vaccines just seconds ago. Yep. Uh, I got an email before the show from Jackie um, V. I won't give her last name here. Uh, said this very quickly, and she wants your opinion very badly on this. She said that she noticed recently that there's been a push for the whooping cough vaccine, whooping cough vaccine especially for those having babies and our grandbabies. I'll be having a new baby, uh, grandbaby in August. What's the sudden push, and should I get one to prevent risking my new grandson? She'd like your opinion. Whooping cough. Vaccine. None of my children are vaccinized. They, they have, they, they, they have, they have, none of them have received vaccinations. They, 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 okay. None of them are vaccinated. It's, it almost sounds I, like I can't tell. for her. I can't tell her what to do as far as you know stuff like that, but I can tell her what I've done. And I always tell people, look, you know, here's the deal. Here's what I've done. This is what I've done with my kids. Uh, my kids are great in school. They're doing well in school. They're like straight-A students. You know, 
they got great attitudes except for the 14 year old right now she's but she'll come around she will she has to and and so it's just one of those deals i mean it's just it's just everything goes better with healthy children and kids that are relatively intelligent i mean you start giving them a whole bunch of injections and chemicals in their body a bunch of lead and mercury and all who knows what they're being exposed to and all of a sudden their iq drops way off i mean harvard has proven repeatedly and repeated studies have proven that you lower iq scores in kids by giving them fluoride i mean so what the heck is this excuse me, crap still doing in our water. I mean, if we know what drops IQ scores, what are we doing with it? I know it's an industrial byproduct of aluminum and phosphate production. They had so much of it, it was so poisonous, they were using it for rat poison. They couldn't get rid of it that way, so they started pumping it into the water supply. Plus, it makes you servile and fertile, first being used in the concentration camps in both Russia and Germany during World War II. I mean, it's unbelievable that they're putting this stuff into our water supply, and we all think it's okay. And what's even more unbelievable is that we know that it's bad, and we continue to drink water that has fluoride in it. I mean, I won't even drink water in a restaurant anymore, Doug. I will always order bottled water in the restaurant. If they don't have bottled water in glass, I will bring my own water into the restaurant and ask them, can I bring this in because you only have water in plastic. I'm that fanatical now. The other day I was down in Miami with David Crank, who's a good friend of mine, who's a pastor. Actually, we were in Palm Beach, and we went to this really fancy restaurant, and uh, they 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 brought me bottles of water, and they brought they had ice in the bottle in, in, in the in the in the in the glass. And I said, "Could you bring me a glass without ice?" And they said, "Why?" I said, "Because your ice has got fluoride in it. If you're using tap water, well, yes, tap water for the ice." And I said, "I don't want that." I said, "Why am I paying you for fancy water and using ice that's got fluoride in it?" And see, you got to think through this stuff. Fluoride is that poisonous. You don't even you don't need any of it in your body. It's just that bad for you. Because why do you want to calcify your pineal gland? Well, we know your pineal gland is the cord of living water that basically connects you to the thirteenth dimension to God when you get saved, and it gives you spiritual insight and presence in the you know in, in the unseen realms. That's what that's what the pineal gland does. I mean, it's it's been called the third eye by ancients for millennia. And we know that chloride will calcify it and destroy a lot of your reasoning skills and a lot of your skills to feel the presence of being led by the Holy Spirit. So why in the world do we want to put something in our body that's going to do something like that? So no, I don't recommend the immunizations. I don't recommend any immunizations, and I don't do it. I didn't do it to my own kids, and I don't recommend anybody else doing it. But you need to check with your own doctor, and you need to do your own research. And I've written extensive articles on my website about that. And also, Dr. Mendelssohn has a really, really good book. Everybody needs to read. He's been dead now for over 20 years. But he wrote a a book. It's called Confessions of a Medical Heretic. He was a pediatrician, and he writes in that book about immunizations. And then he wrote another whole article called Vaccine Roulette. And then he wrote another book that was called How to Have a a a Healthy Child in Spite of Your Pediatrician. (laughs) Okay? He was a pediatrician. He wrote this book. And everybody needs to have those books in their library and the one thing that back, the one article he wrote on vaccine roulette that one's also posted on my website, and so you guys can read that from Dr. Mendelson. Also, you need to maintain well supplies, stuff supplies of food and water. And if you're going to get storable food, I have no problem with that. We have the 20 year shelf life food at my office. We sell it. I don't have any pork or soy or anything like that MSG in any of my food, and it's supposed to be all GMO free. That's what it's supposed to be, and that's what we made sure that people know that. And if you're going to be eating this stuff, you might as well not be putting a bunch of poison in your body. You need to maintain self-sufficiency because, remember, if something happens, all these store shelves are going to be empty within a matter of hours. And also, remember, this is very, very important. You've got to tell people to listen to alternative media. You've got to really promote the Hagman Show, the Dave Hodges Show. And I'll be starting my own show, by the way, on the 25th of this month, just in a few days. And we're going to go be, I'll be, you know, we can, you can go to the website find out on that. It'll be from 3 to 4 in the afternoon. And I'll be covering the daily news every single day along with bringing on guests on. But unlike you guys, I'm not as brave. I don't want to do three hours. Fucking <laughs> Joe, that's a long time every day. It takes a lot of work. I did that when I was hosting the Power Hour for six months, you know, as an alternative host out there. And I couldn't believe how much work a three-hour show takes as far as prep time. It takes a long time to get ready for a show that long. No, it sure does. Especially if you're, especially if you're actually getting books in all the time from the guests that you're bringing on. You're actually reading the books. It takes a lot of time. I don't even know how you, if you had guests every day, I don't, and they all had new books. I don't know how you possibly could read them all because you couldn't physically do it. Uh, it it's it's really tough, but uh, it, it's great news though that you're going to be on an hour an hour a day uh, starting the 25th um, from three to yep. four. You said perfect. Okay, yep, that'll be right. We'll yeah. be doing for three to four. It's on the Dave Hodges satellite. And okay. Dave helped me get the thing set up. I was going to do another uh, major media person place, but I'm not going to talk about it right now. And uh, I don't know. They, they just got really weird on me. And I said, you know what, guys? If you want to be weird and you're going to give me all these caveats and you're not going to say what I want to say and do what I want to do, I don't really have any interest in being on that network. 
And so I decided not to do it. So that's why we're doing it with the satellite radio, uh, kind of like what you guys are doing. And so I can't say that you and Dave Hodges don't have a huge audience, which I know you do. And so I'm excited about having you guys on that show, too. Now, that's let's that. go ahead. I want to talk about five foods that you can use. As we talked about pineal gland, I want to talk about five delicious foods that actually help decalcify the pineal gland. And also you can use vitamin K2. That does very well for that, too. But the, the pineal gland that could be decalcified by using, remember, you've got to go off the fluoride, number one. Get off all that stuff, you start drinking distilled water. But watercress is full of iodine. Iodine helps remove the heavy metals from the bloodstream. Heavy metals are a contributing factor to pineal gland calcification, along with other brain disorders. So watercress is a really good food that you can eat. Uh, pineapple, again, is very, very important. It's also very high in manganese. It helps to decalcify the pineal gland. Coconut water. It's also similar to a blood plasma. It has actually been used in emergency situations as blood plasma, which I don't recommend. It's one of the most powerful fluids for rehydrating the body, and it also contains lauratic acid, which boosts our immune system. Overall, coconuts contain a lot of potassium ions, which hydrate the body and allow the brain to function properly. Bananas are full of the amino acid tryptophan, which helps to produce serotonin. The more serotonin you have, the more melatonin you can produce from the pineal gland. And avocados, they contain a lot of lutein, which is a nutrient excellent for the vision. And the third eye is associated with extrasensory vision. They are also very high in oleic acid, a fatty acid, which helps to insulate the myelin in our brain. And it is the matter that improves brain function by increasing the speed of neuron processing. Those are five foods you can do along with K2 that will actually help to decalcify the pineal gland. But again, if you're continuing to expose your pineal gland to bromine, fluorine, and chlorine, it's not going to work. You have to get off of the chlorine and the fluorine. You have to stay away from the chlorinated water and the bromide and the, and the, and the bread products. So much bread now has loaded with uh, bromide, and you, you, can't, you can't eat that. You have to stay away from it because these are halogens in the periodic table, just like iodine is. And the, the, uh, the thyroid thinks that this stuff is uh, good for you, and so it absorbs it. And so you've got to get off this stuff. You've got to get rid of all of these things. And you want to have proper thyroid function, which is one of the master glands. Here's another really good article I want to cover with you guys. It's uh, scientists are now offering hard evidence that the Earth's electromagnetic field influences human behavior. Isn't that interesting? Because, you know, we've talked so many times with you guys about electromagnetic energy and frequency, and now they're starting to show that the Earth itself can affect the electromagnetic energy and brain activity. And see, the government and DARPA have known that for years and years and years. That's why they can actually implant thoughts into your mind using the right frequencies. With the right frequencies, they can actually cause you to have, just within minutes, they can make you suicidally depressed. They can use drones to do this. Uh, they can do this with their wind towers. Uh, they can do it with, uh, you know, these huge, these big machines they bring out when they're doing stuff. They did it up. They did it to the Wall Street guys. Uh, they can make them depressed. It can get them suicidal. It can make them want to run away. It can cause extreme pain. It can make them have diarrhea. It can do all of these things just in, within a matter of minutes. It can create so much pain from a microwave standpoint, from heat, that you'll, you'll run away because you're, you'll feel like your body's on fire. I, I'm, I know you guys are familiar with all these different weapons they're using. That's all based on frequency and electromagnetic energy. And now they're starting to find out that we can actually be affected by our, the Earth's electromagnetic energy in how we think and how we act. And also, high-pressure zones and low-pressure zones do the same thing, though, because they do this, they, what they do is they've all, they, 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 they change the osmotic pressure in the body when you have low pressure, high pressure, and it, and it decreases or either increases osmotic, osmotic flow across the cellular membranes. In other words, our bodies work better under high pressure than low pressure, and that's why when you have a storm front coming in, a lot of times you get real sluggish and real tired. Have you ever felt that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, but that's, that, that's why it does that. And so I, I always like to, you know, share those little little tidbits and stuff with people. That's, That's why sometimes we'll have a front coming in. We'll have a front coming in. I'll tell Sharon, I said, man, my energy levels are in the tank today. And she goes, yeah, mine are too. And that's because of the, 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 we have, we're in a low pressure zone. Same thing, the moon affects behavior. Uh, you know, because, and, it's, and this, is not, this, this is not new age, new, 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 new stuff. This is just what happens from a physiological standpoint. You go to any emergency room during a full moon, you have all kinds of crazies out. Because the moon, again, is gravitation 
pulling back off against the earth, and again, it changes osmotic pressure. It does things to the tides on the earth. It does things to your body, too, because remember, your body's primarily water. And so everything's affected by the moon and all of this gravity and all the stuff that we're living in and all this electromagnetic radiation. That's why it's really, really important, like we mentioned earlier, to stay away from electromagnetic devices as much as you possibly can and turn off your Wi-Fi at night so your pineal gland will get a break and it won't be bombarded all night with electromagnetic energy thinking it's daylight. Very interesting. And, well, and, and I'll, is, you know, and I'll say this: uh, back in the uh, late seventies or early or mid seventies, I was working on the EMS, and it, it, I mean, we could tell when the when the uh, moon was full because the calls would increase, the severity of of everything was would, would be on the rise, and uh, the same with the police. You know, um, it, it's it's not a fable or a wives' tale, and, and you point out, uh, of course. Uh, this the science behind that so very well, good well they 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 call they, they yeah, that's that's where the term lunatic came from the oh yeah the full moon that's where it came from luna that that's where it's from and you know i remember years ago uh, austin when he was 14 years old he was in a dirt bike accident this is my 27 year old uh, he you can call health masters and talk to him the phone number there is 863 96 Nine six seven zero two four four, and that's if you're calling internationally eight six three nine six seven zero two four four. You can call the eight hundred number at eight hundred seven two six eighteen thirty four, and you ask him any of these questions we're talking about tonight. But I remember he was fourteen years old. He had a he took a big jump on a big two fifty YZ Yamaha, and uh, and he basically uh, pancaked on the jump. It was on a dirt bike, and he cra- he crashed, and his bike came down on his left leg, on his left foot, and it turned his left foot backwards. And he snapped the bones in his in his in his ankle, and he had to be you know taken to the hospital, emergency surgery, and all that. And I remember we were there that night. It was a full moon, and uh, you know, and, the, and it was like the whole place was like, oh God, it was nuts. And uh, people were screaming and yelling and carrying on. And finally, I said, what the heck is it always like this in here? And the lady said, it's a full moon. It's always like this on the full moon. It's, if nobody wants to even work the shifts when there's a full moon because it gets crazy in this hospital. But that isn't it crazy. I mean, but oh, yeah. that, again, that's what, hap- that's what happens when you have all that gravitational pull and what's happening with cellular osmotic pressure. It does all kinds of things. And so people, you know, that's why, you know, even the, the, the uh, farmer's almanac, it talks about when the plant crops based upon lunar cycles, which I always thought that was all kind of interesting. A lot of people think that's all new agey or satanic, and it's really not. It just has to do with physiology and, and gravitational pull. So I just thought I'd throw that out there as a little bonus for everybody. <laughs> But uh, let's go ahead. Let's let's talk a little bit more nutrition stuff here because I, I really want. I've got a whole bunch of stuff on this, and because uh, there's there's so many things. I want to talk about the drug that kid was on in Charlotte. It's Subixone. Have you heard of that yet? That he was on. He was taking that drug. Yeah, yeah, but but I I, I don't know frankly what it does or what you know why would you why, well, what, what why, that what that is. That's a, that's that's like methadone. Okay, it's it's a drug they give for people that are coming off of opiate addiction. And the problem is when you take a drug like that, it causes a massive uh, – it can cause massive psychosis and psychiatric, you know, like, like delusional behavior of wanting to go out and kill people and do things like he did. And see, that's the craziest thing about all of this stuff. I mean the kid was on the drug. See, it doesn't matter how many gun laws we pass. If, they, if, they're, if they're giving these kids these kind of drugs, then you know, they're going to have all kinds of crazy behavior out of these kids. I mean, you know, you have to look at, look at, remember back of the Jim Jones thing back with the uh, Guiana back there in back in the 70s or the early 80s? Yep. When they had the Jim Jones massacre, they found out that all of these guys were like, all these people were like on these different drugs. And a lot of these were like CIA drugs they were using now. And there was like a mass mind control hypnotic trance that these people were in. And then pretty soon they all commit suicide, or a whole bunch of them did. And, you know, kind of like they're, I guess a lot of them were forced to, and if they didn't want to, they got shot. So that was a horrible situation, and you guys can read that on Wikipedia if you want to read all about that. But the point is, that's why I personally believe that a lot of these shootings are like that are being done like this. It's like Russ Dizdar talks about these sleeper soldiers, and that these satanic soldiers and all these people that have been programmed and had their personalities fractured and split, and they basically are they they wind these guys up and they sick them on people, and then they then they know exactly what they're going to do. And suddenly we have this this shooting right before the TPP vote, and you know the revote on this, and now everybody gets obfuscated back in the press, and nobody's talking about the treaty anymore. And you know I hate to think that the criminal elements of our government are actually doing this, but guys, it sure seems pretty obvious to me. 
I mean, yeah. why did this kid suddenly do this, and why did the media go so berserk and covering all of this again? I mean, it's awful, and I feel terrible for these folks that got shot in that church. But again, that was a gun-free zone in that church, and apparently they, the gun, they, they, they couldn't have guns in their churches in that, in that particular town or state or whatever in South Carolina. And, and the sad part about it is is that you know, you can't – do that. If, if, if a person would have been in there with a gun, they could have shot this kid. And I want to ask you guys a question. He shot all these people, including men, but he reloaded five times. <laughs> I mean, doesn't that yeah. seem odd to you guys? It, it does. Um, you know, I, I, Ted, I thought about that, and I thought, okay, you know, um, if you're hiding behind uh, or, you know, uh, but, yeah, behind a pew or something like that, uh, you still would have the time to uh, jump the jump the kid. Uh, the, the, his stature was diminutive. I mean, uh, That's right. you know, and reloading, even if it's just merely uh, replacing the magazine uh, in a semi-automatic, you still have you know, you still have to expel one magazine, put the other one in, and then pull the uh, uh, pull the mechanism back. So that takes time. You know, and um, yeah, so I, it, it does seem odd to me. Well, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And then again, you know, he stole the gun. I mean, there's, there's no gun laws out there that would have stopped this. I mean, it's funny to me. They sent all these guns south of the border with the, to the Mexicos with Fast and Furious, right? They sent all these guns south of the border. I mean, they get busted for doing it. Yeah, they don't want us to keep our guns, but they want to give all these Mexican crime lords all of these machine guns, which make it, they wanted to make, make their way back across the border is what we find out now in the memos, and so they could use that as another thing to take guns away from us. I mean, this administration is so corrupt that it's almost beyond belief that these guys haven't been impeached. I really, they must have so much trash on Congress and the Senate that they, they can't impeach them because they've got so much filth on them, either with pedophilia or or adultery or whatever, that these guys are scared to say anything, guys. I mean, otherwise it doesn't make any sense to me. What do you guys think? Oh, I think you're dead on yeah. about, you know, the timing of the shooting and the Trans-Pacific Partnership slash TPA vote. Uh, we talked about this last week that it was uh, very eerie the way that came about, that being the number one story, then the shooting happened. Uh, the shooting becomes the number one story. The vote goes through in the House. It gets swept under the rug in the news. It seemed a little too coincidental for us. Exactly, which brings the, brings the me to the exact, question. The, the, ex, the exact time of the vote, the exact time yeah. they're voting, Obama's on TV making and giving a press statement. I mean, All right. I, I don't even I, – I mean, okay, it may, it may be coincidental. Okay, I got that. It may be coincidental, okay? But it just doesn't seem coincidental to me when this TP thing was such a huge deal to Obama. It was like his mandate that an Obamacare – I mean, remember, Cloward, they want to destroy the population of a country, destroy the country, destroy the republic by creating so much expense in the free social welfare protocol and programs that they allow the entire country to self-implode. And this entire thing with TPP is going to do that along with the Obamacare. I mean, we've got to repeal the Obamacare, which I can't understand why that's even still around, and we've got to get rid of the Trans-Pacific Partnership as far as this fast track they're trying to do now to let them go and go in and take it into the back door. And, I mean, I don't know what to say, guys. I mean, it just seems odd to me that we, the American population, think that all of this is okay and that we're so easily, you know, misled and obfuscated. I mean, as soon as that thing happened, I thought, okay, what are they trying to cover up now? What are they planning on doing now? And I find out the following day they had that doggone a vote at the same time that Obama was doing his press conference. I mean, well, we all, everybody just kind of missed it. Yeah, well, let, let me ask you, uh, you know, because I, I respect your, your, um, I mean, you're a very intelligent man, but uh, how would you time something like this? Considering the drugs that you mentioned, or the drug that you mentioned specifically, the one drug you mentioned, considering the, um, I, I mean, is there a trigger uh, is there would there be a trigger word, a trigger event, something? How do you, how would you, mechanically cause this kid or any person to do something like this? Um, you, you know, you've got you've got to fracture. You have to you have to fracture their personalities. You've got to split them up into different personality subsets. 
Uh, they did this in the concentration camps in Germany. Uh, they actually would mingle in those guys. They would actually torture people so long until they would fracture their subsets. Uh, you know, they used they used different things. They used they they would rape them, torture them, do whatever they have to do until they fracture their subsets of their personalities, and they can actually pull a separate personality out of that person. And they can use the drugs to induce that and the drugs to control that. And what they do, that person with that specific subset, that sleeper person, has certain certain things. If he hears certain trigger words, this is all according to Russ Dizdar and also stuff that I've read with the concentration camps and you know with with the MK Ultra programs they had in the 60s and the 70s and the 50s that when they give them a certain subset word it triggers that personality and then they can you know they can tell them who they want them to kill and they just automatically do it they don't even think about it it's one of those deals and so these people are screwed up basically is what they are they're really messed up uh, Desdar Desdar says there's over a million of them in the United States now gosh I hope he's wrong about that number uh, he, I think he said in fact it was much higher than that globally but all of these people that have been raised to these Luciferian covens all of these years, they do this to these kids at a very, very young age, and they fracture these psyches, and then they use the drugs to induce these psychotic episodes, and they use the trigger phrases or trigger words to do that, Doug. Apparently, it was pretty much perfected in the concentration camps back in the 30s and 40s, and probably the earlier, actually in the 40s, with Mengele and the boys, and a lot of what they did and a lot of what the Germans used in the science and the human bodies with the torture and all the stuff that they did, they are still using a lot of that research that was done in a lot of the medical practices and things done to doing today, especially with the infertility clinics, a lot of them use a lot of the research that was done in the Nazi clinics because they were really doing a lot of the eugenics as far as how to sterilize people, how to increase fertility, because they had the Labensborn program in which they uh, wanted to increase the amount of quote-unquote super soldiers, and they wanted to increase the amount of Aryans they were bearing, and they were actually trying to find the best way and the best way to keep these girls as fertile as they possibly could when they were sleeping with the SS officers who were of pure Aryan descent, and they would take the largest females with the largest guys and the smartest guys with the smartest girls, and they wanted to make sure they maintained the mass maximum amount of fertility to produce as many children as they possibly could. And that's all part of that program. It was all that huge medical experimentation that was done on human beings, which is completely unethical in these concentration camps. You guys may not even been aware of all that one no i mean mean, not to the level of your not not to that level no yeah but but that but that's that's what happened it was all in the labensborn program and so remember that that was hitler he wanted to raise an entire master race and and that was part of what he wanted to do and he wanted to just he was taking darwinianism to its next logical step in which you only allow the super people to breed with super people the high iq big smart people big smart people that are real smart and that gives you a higher probability genetically, and it actually does statistically, of having larger people with higher IQs. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, though. It doesn't work every single time. And so it's all part of that package that was going on. In fact, I had another one of the guys, uh, I had him uh, doing a bunch of research for me a few years ago. He knew one of the Labensborn guys. He knew one of the men who was on that program. And the guy, I think I mentioned this before, before he was like in his 70s, and the guy was still huge. He was still, he was still tall, blonde hair, full head of hair, still real high muscle content and everything else because he was one of the genetic experiments that had been done and uh he just he was the guy was brilliant and, and, and my and the guy was David, the guy who was doing the research for him, he said he knew the guy. He said the guy was just unbelievable. He was off the charts as far as smart. And so the thing about this is is that, you know, this is the steps through Darwinian. See, remember, when all of this stuff started back in the 1800s with Darwin, when he decided to do his, you know, did he go on, the, you know, on, his, on a ship out to the Galapagos Islands and start touring to talk about the origin of man and the origin of the species and all the things that he wanted to do, everything goes back to eugenics and population control through selective breeding. I mean, when you have animals... In a kennel, you don't breed you don't breed the weakest animals with the weakest animals. If you want a strong animal, you don't do that. And so that's a Darwin. That's that's the that's the end outcome of what's going on when you have survival of the fittest through Darwinism. You want to get the biggest strongest people with the biggest strongest people. And what ends up happening is you have these super people who develop. Remember, Jimmy the Greek said that uh, years and years ago, and they kicked him off of one of the, uh, the I think it was ABC Sports or NBC Sports. And, and you know, and so you know, we talked about he talked about talked about these top athletes. And how a lot of them, you know, had you know really really good DNA as far as athletics. And the thing about this is, is that people don't understand that, you know, the DNA is everything. That's why they're coming in with the epigenetics. They're changing our DNA through the GMOs, through the chemtrails, through the Morgellons disease, through all of these immunizations, 
all the things that they're doing to us, they're destroying us, just like they did in Genesis chapter 6. They're destroying the DNA of human beings. And that's, again, why they're going to transhumanism. You see, that's what it all boils down to. So when you ignore that and what they're doing at that level, and you don't realize that it's a spiritual war, war taking place in the heavenlies, then what ends up happening is you miss the whole point of what they're trying to do. They don't care about you, Doug, or about me, or about Joe, or our wives, or our kids, or anybody. All they care about is greed and power and destroying the creation of God. That's all they care about. And so when you understand that mindset, it makes more sense how they can do chemtrails, how they can do GMOs. And, you know, and, they, and these guys have dug themselves into their deep underground military bunkers all over the United States. According to Bob Fletcher now, they're everywhere, you know, thousands of miles of tunnels. And they're just planning on riding the whole thing out, I guess, if we have some kind of biological release or whatever happens. And then they're just waiting for us, I guess, on the surface to kill everybody. Kill it. We're all supposed to kill one another, which I think you're going to be surprised how many people who are going to work together in humanity to try to survive rather than try to kill everybody. I hope that's going to be true anyhow. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I do it as well. And, and I, I have a lot of faith that uh, we can make that difference. We can uh, uh, promote the, this unity, and uh, and I've seen it uh, here on our program where uh, you know we are creating a, a, a very loyal, unit, unified uh, um, group that uh, you know collectively you know we're, we're fighting against uh, really some formidable odds here. But but, but you know what. Uh, we're fighting from a position of victory based on our Christian faith and the fact that, uh, you know, we're uh, you know, just based on, on, on our biblical, uh, sound biblical, biblical uh, faith. So, yeah. Well, once you, once you realize that our souls are tied to God after we become saved and that, you know, it doesn't matter what they do to our bodies at that point because we're just a hologram anyhow, according to all the physicists now. You know that we're going to be, you know, that, and this whole thing's a battle for the souls of men anyhow. We and we understand all that. Once you understand, you know, the entire obfuscation of the whole planet <laughs> and the holographic field that we live in, when you finally get that, then that you begin to realize that it doesn't matter. It's not a battle of flesh and blood. We get that. And they, and what, like Jesus said, He said, "Death, where oh, where is thy death? Where is thy victory? Where is thy sting? It's gone." It doesn't exist for us as Christians anymore. The problem is we as Christians just need to wake up and stop this onslaught of the New Age order and the New World order and what's going on. If the preachers in the pulpit would wake up like Rodney Howard Brown has or Chuck Baldwin has or Paul McGuire has and, and realize that if we all just start telling each other the truth, if they started doing that as our leaders, that we could change this thing pretty doggone fast. You know, Coach Dabemeyer, he's going to be up there also talking in, in Washington, D.C. with us too. And he basically said the same thing. He said he wants a group of people that when he calls them together, they hop on a plane or get on a bus or jump in their car or whatever, or they carpool, and they come to whatever event he needs them to be at so that we all work together as a unified team. Now, I realize that's not possible for everybody because a lot of us have jobs and we have to work. But, you know, we can make plans if we have weeks in time, weeks, you know, weeks advanced preparation time. We've been talking about this thing in, with Rodney, with you guys, since like February or March of this year. And we're yep. letting everybody know this thing's going to be there, and we've got to go up there. We've got to support Rodney. We've got to help him do what he's going to do. We've got to support Coach Dabemeyer. You know, I'd love to meet as many people as we possibly can because, it's a, it, you know, it's, it's time. I mean, I heard an old Baptist preacher one time, Doug. He said, every pot sits on its own bottom. And that's the truth. We're all responsible for this mess this country's in, every one of us. We all are because we have, as an aggregate, not done anything to stop it. You know, and, and for those of us who've called our senators and our congressmen over TPP, which I've done multiple times, and I'll call them again tomorrow because this vote's coming up again, you know, what we've learned is this. You know, if we'll just go ahead and just tell them how we feel and that we're not going to let them go back in the office if they do all of this nonsense, they're going to basically hopefully do what we ask them to do unless they're so bought and paid for or being so blackmailed that they can't have, they don't have a choice, which that may be the case of some of these guys. But, you know, the whole thing about it is we need to have term limits up there, and these guys don't need to be running around staying in Congress and the Senate for 30 and 40 and 50 years. It's nonsense. They become entrenched in the Washington bureaucracy, the greed, the filth, and the, just the, the absolute just dishonesty of the whole thing. You know, that's why we have to understand that we need to be bringing people in. They're going to be fresh blood into these different districts and in Congress and in the Senate. And we need to do the best we possibly can to get these people to do what they're supposed to do when they get there and do what they say they were going to do. And a lot of the Tea Party guys have been trying to do that, and a lot of them have got to come under a tremendous amount of attack because of that. Remember when the, uh, the one black fellow from Miami down there, from the Dade County area, what was his name? Uh, it was a Colonel, Colonel, uh, Colonel, uh, oh, West. you know his name. 
Alan West. Yeah, you know he was great, but he was there. He was there two years, done it in and out, done. He went up there and raised so much cane doing what he said he was going to do. They got rid of him again. They didn't put him back in there again. But right. see, those are the kind of people we need. And so now I think he's moving to Texas, and he'll probably be running again for Congress to go back up there again. You know, in a more area, in an area that's more conservatively based. But you know, but 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 West actually did something and went up there and said stuff and actually said did what he said. he did what he said he was going to do and for about two years he was he was he was he was you know raking them all over the coals up there and see that's the kind of people that we need in Congress and in the Senate that's the kind of people we need at the grassroots level and so if we don't do that if we allow these globalist Frankist Sabbatine Satanist Kabbalists to continue to do what they've done to us for the past hundred and 80 years, if we allow that to continue to go on in the United States, what's going to happen is we're not going to have a country any longer. I mean, it's going to be gone, and we're all going to be just slaves in this giant matrix, and they're going to just use us for their little <laughs> ever ready bunny thing like the matrix like that that that, 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 that that movie did. I mean, that's what they do. They, they, they consume our energy. They troll through the fourth dimension and consume the energy. They're like energy vampires. That's what these things are. That's what they're all about. These satanic people and how they sacrifice people. We talked about that at length on the show before with you guys. And see, that's what we have to understand is we've got to stand in the aggregate and we've got to stand together in a unified front to say, no, I don't think we're going to let you do that to us anymore. We're done with it. And if we do that, and if we get that tipping point and reach the 10% that Dave Hodges talks about, we can change the entire country back to the United States that we knew when we were younger, Doug. But if we don't, we're going to lose the entire country. And that's, well, we and that's coming up really, really fast. Yeah. We got to do it for our children, and not going to hear those people out there saying, "Oh, it's too late! It's too late! We're not going to affect change." Well, you know, look, what are you going to do in the meantime? Okay, uh, even if you even if you say, "Well, it's too late," we can't really make a difference. Okay, assuming that is correct. So, what do you do between now and uh, you know when everything implodes? You just sit around? Is that what you do? No, you've got to right. <laughs> do something. You got to do something. Well, That's well, right. Well, you know. It, it, well, no, you have to do something. I mean, you've got to get, number one, you've got to get in shape. You've got to get off all these, all these. I mean, think about it, guys. Everybody listen to me for a second. Let's get real serious about this before. I mean, if you're taking four or five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten prescription drugs, and you've got a one-month supply, and the entire supply line breaks down with all of these drugs, and you're addicted to these drugs, and you, and you end up dying from withdrawal symptoms from these drugs, or whatever happens to you, especially you know if you've got really blood elevated blood sugar and you're a type 2 diabetic and you're trying to control it with insulin and everything else, you're not going to be alive in a few days after you run out of the drugs in most cases. I mean, you've got to realize that right now why all of this stuff is going on You've got to work with a naturopathic physician, a nutritionist, or somebody in your area, or and your, and your medical doctor's got you on all these drugs to reduce the medication and the dosing of these drugs and try to get you off of all of this stuff. I mean, if you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 pounds overweight, 100 pounds overweight, 200 pounds overweight, how bad does it have to get before you start making healthier choices? I mean, when are you going to get? When are you, you going to go to healthmasters.com and just sign up for the for silly free newsletter for heaven's sake and learn about what you can do to stay healthy? I mean, when are you going to start realizing that, hey, I can't keep doing what I've done? I remember you told me last year, Doug, you thought you were going to die because of the diabetes because it was like basically out of control. And you said, I've got to do something, Ted. I mean, you called me one day, and we talked for two hours on the telephone. I said, oh, we can do all this, Doug, but it's going to take a concerted effort of your part and my part to work on this thing together with you to get this thing under control. And you did it. We did it. And, we, and your, your blood sugar is doing great now. Absolutely. But see, most people don't, un- but, but people don't understand that they get caught into that, what's called, called that drug model in which I'm taking my five prescription drugs a day, my insurance pays for them, and so therefore i got to basically think that it's going to be okay to take these drugs from now on, and I'm going to be okay taking these drugs. And the side effects of the drugs are never discussed in most cases from the doctor who's giving you the prescription. The other day I was at the pharmacist and I was picking up some amoxicillin, some antibiotics, which every once in a while I have to use that for a different – it doesn't matter why I do it. It's just for an ear infection that I get occasionally, probably from the stupid chemtrails. And what, and what happened is I was talking to him about the flu shots being given to pregnant women. And he looked at me he goes, he goes, he's a, he, first he said to me, he goes, you must be trained in this. And I said, well, yeah, I'm a biochemist trained at Florida State. He goes, well, you know what happens. He said, you can't be giving women, you know – flu shots that contain mercury when they're pregnant. He goes, I said, I know. He goes, I won't, I won't tell people to do it. He said, I won't do it. I won't give them these shots. He just can't be giving pregnant women shots. So then we started talking about all the stuff with epigenetics. We started, and the guy was awake. He actually knew what he was doing, and he knew how bad the drugs were that we were giving everybody, but that was his profession. 
but at least he knew what he was doing. He was willing to discuss it. And he was talking about how we, before pregnant women never got any in, injections. They never got anything. Now they're telling women, pregnant women to get flu shots that contain thimerosal, which is mercury, when they're pregnant with children. And they know there's neurological differentiation and development going on in that embryo and that that mercury is going to be a neurotoxin. They don't care. They don't care. That's what you've got to understand. They don't care about you or anybody listening to this show tonight, the globalists that run the planet. They've got their tickets to their underground bunkers. They don't care what they do to the planet. And the thing that's funny to me is this. A lot of these people who are involved with these guys, because there's going to be millions of people in these underground bunker complexes. They're so big around the world. They don't realize who's doing all of this. They don't realize these are Sabbatane, Kabbalists, Frankenist, Satanists that are doing this, and that they're going to be underground with these guys. Well, what if they decide to start doing their little sacrificial ceremonies when they're underground, Doug? Who are they going to pick? <laughs> That's I mean, right. I mean, I mean b- but nobody's thinking through this. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these sickos don't stop doing their sicko stuff. <laughs> That's very true. No, they don't, Ted. With that, uh, we've reached a point for the top of the hour break. Let's take that now. We're going to come back with our final hour with Dr. Ted Breuer, his website, healthmasters.com, Body by Ted. Uh, Fantastic show. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. So much information we're covering. It is uh, something I want to go back and listen to because, as Ted, you're not talking too fast. You're actually delivering a huge amount of information. Ladies and gentlemen, to our third and final hour on this Monday, June 22nd, 2015, our guest today, Dr. Ted Breuer, healthmasters.com is his website, Body by Ted. Also, his book is Breakthrough Breakthrough Health. Health, man. Great book. Breakthrough Health, absolutely. The healthmasters.com and Dr. Ted Breuer, it's a family-owned business, and they offer the top-of-the-line supplements that they manufacture. Uh, you guys manufacture your own supplements, correct, Ted? That's right. We have we use, we use, we use multiple suppliers. They always manufacture our specifications, Joe. Yeah, and, and that's so, what yes. makes it great. You don't know where you're getting, you know, some of the other grocery store, uh, drug right. store, yeah. drug store. Yeah. This, you know exactly where it's coming from, who made it, and um, you're not going to be disappointed. And, and I've seen the videos of, of the lab, and I got to tell you, I think I think Ted said one of the machines is uh, there, three million dollar uh, piece of equipment that that uh, makes the capsules or fills the capsules. It's just incredible. Well, no, it's just we always get the best stuff. But, you know, I was thinking about Paul Harvey and what he just said on that little uh, thing that you guys, as far as if I were the devil. And what's interesting, I knew Paul Harvey. I probably did 50 seminars with him back in the 90s. and He was one of the nicest people I've ever met. And he was a real loss to the entire communication business because he was so to the point and so clear. He was a good guy. But I pulled this article up real quick. And I want to talk to you guys about this because I pulled some more research up real quick. This is the article I was telling you that I didn't talk about last time I was on with you guys about, about breast cancer. I would tell you the source of this article is the Journal of Applied Toxology, which is one of the top journals in the world as far as toxicities and how people get sick from different types of poisons. And it's also, uh, there's two articles from the Journal of Top Applied Toxology and another one from the Envi- Encyclopedia of Environmental Health. And here's what it says. It goes into detail here. Do antipers- the name of the article is, Do Antiperspirants Cause Breast Cancer? Breast cancer and cyst formations are at epidemic proportions. At what point can we say conclusively that aluminum and antiperspirants is the, ca- is the cause? The evidence grows stronger and stronger, largely due to the labors of one dedicated scientist. But she states that the absolute proof does not exist yet. However, there's plenty of anecdotal evidence. So how much proof do you require before deciding? Is it better to be safe than sorry? And she goes, antiperspirants as cause of breast cancer are discussed. Some of the Keel Conference scientists work on the likelihood of between this. And here's what it says. I want to read you with this. It interferes with iron homeostasis in the body, and they found that when the team took nipple fluid from women with and without cancer, when they looked at it, the nipple fluid of the women with cancer was twice as high in aluminum as women who did not have breast cancer. And this just goes on. The whole article is long. It talks about aluminum association with breast cysts. It goes into detail. Aluminum found in type 1 and type 2 breast cysts. And the, the amount of aluminum is found in both cyst types is dramatically greater than in normal tissues or milk. But particularly notable is that more cancer-prone breast cysts have extremely high levels of aluminum, averaging about 150 micrograms per liter. The graph to the left makes this easy to see when it's showing these different graphs. And it says, do antiperspirants cause breast cancer? And it said numerous studies dating all the way back into the 1920s have shown that the breast 
is one of the most frequent sites of carcinomas and, or cancer, but the relative proportion of breast cancer in the United States has gone up chronologically with the use of antiperspirant deodorants using aluminum. This is amazing, guys. And so we're not making this stuff up. This, this, this stuff is that bad. So ladies, no matter what you do, don't use aluminum chlorhydrate antiperspirant deodorants because a lot of these things are now implicating that the use of these antiperspirant deodorants is one of the primary causes of breast cancer itself. And so uh, I mean, here's, another, here's another article. It says mortality results from breast tumor growth and metastatic rates rather than the breast itself. That is, breast tumors don't kill, but their metastases do. The research you presented at February's Kiel Conference on the Biological Effects of Aluminum demonstrate that aluminum in the breast causes changes that can lead to deadly metastases in breast cancer. She had, through the, done a great deal of other research, aluminum breast tissue, and she goes on and on and on about measuring all this stuff. And it says estrogen as aluminum as an estrogen mimic. Metal, many metals are estrogen mimics, making them potentially dangerous in the human body because of their ability to combine with estrogen receptors, thus replacing natural estrogen. Dr. Darbury did a study demonstrating that aluminum is also an estrogen mimic. And go, this, this article goes on and on and on. And, and basically what she's saying is this. Since we don't know and we can't prove 100% that this breast cancer epidemic is being caused by aluminum and antiperspirant deodorants, but there's so much aluminum in these breast tissues and it's coming from somewhere, let's avoid using aluminum chlorhydrate antiperspirant deodorants. Does that make sense, guys? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, I mean, I know it's just more good news tonight. <laughs> I mean, well, not that, but I mean, but breast cancer is horrible, guys. I mean, with these with these mastectomies and lumpectomies and level four, level two, level three, level four breast cancers. These women dying. I've seen and I've had so many people that I've known and friends over the years that have died of breast cancer, and nobody knew when we started using all this aluminum. And plus, now think about this too, Doug. Not only are you getting aluminum in the antiperspirant deodorants, you walk outside on a heavy geoengineering day, and they've been spraying you with aluminum particulate matter. You're breathing it anyhow. It's going That's into right. your blood anyhow. And so not only are you getting it from your pots and pans that are aluminum, okay, you're getting it from your aluminum foil that you're using. Your baking soda contains aluminum triskelate along with your, you know, your table salt contains aluminum. Your antiperspirants contain aluminum. The air contains aluminum. The, the, uh, the, the magnesium, the deodorants that you're using contain uh, aluminum. And so you're putting all of this stuff into your body in, in higher and higher and higher concentrations. I know that when you use the magnesium salts, how they absorb directly through the skin. I know you can take a clove of garlic and cut it and rub it on the bottom of your foot, and you'll taste it in your mouth in 30 minutes. Well, the tissue under the arm right next to the breast is so close to the breast tissue. Why do you want to cover that in aluminum chlorhydrate deodorants? And that's why I said we have a natural deodorant at healthmasters.com. We use magnesium, and we don't use any aluminum chlorhydrate deodorant at all. I don't use it at all. We don't have any of that in our products. And so uh, that's what we always tell folks is that if you're going to do anything, avoid aluminum. And remember, too, it also has been implicated in Alzheimer's disease and in senile dementia. And if you take just five flu shots in a row, you have a 50%, I don't think three, three flu shots, three flu shots in a row, you have a 50% increase of senile dementia if the flu shots contain aluminum and thimerosal. So you guys just stay away from all of this stuff and realize that you've got to start making healthier choices and you've got to start asking questions when you go places. And, and I appreciate when you guys buy stuff from us because it supports what we're doing. Then you know that we're telling you the truth. I mean, it's the same stuff that I use. It's the same stuff my wife uses, that my children use, that my daughter use. And it's the same thing that we use for, you know, we've used it for generations, for, you know, for, for 35 years now, and we've developed them, and we've developed products that are so good they've tested, they've, they've stood the test of time, and they've, they continue to work. And that's, so that's why we, uh, we put Health Masters together back in 1981. 35 years now, Doug, we've been in business. It's been a long, long time. Uh, <laughs> that's, more, that's longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Years. Oh wait. <laughs> well, well, I guarantee a lot of people are listening. Is we've been and we and, and you know and, and that tells you something about the stability of the company. And yeah. you know and because we do we we do what we say we're going to do. We got well, I got a simple guarantee. You don't feel better on my product in 30 days. Just send it back and you get a refund. I I can't do any more than that. I want to I want to show you this another article I want to read to you tonight because I got a bunch more articles I want to because I know we're almost out of time. Health expenditures and services in the United States. Health care costs continue to rise in the United States. Surprise, surprise and throughout the developed world. Because remember, we also know that the insurance companies are the ones who wrote Obamacare because they want to increase their premiums. Total U.S. health care expenditures were estimated to be at $3.09 trillion in 2014. 
and they're projected to soar under Obamacare to $3.57 trillion within two more years. Is that, is that nuts? The health care market in the U.S. in 2014 included the major categories of hospital care, almost a trillion dollars, physician and clinical services, over $600 billion, dental services, over $120 billion, and prescription drugs, close to $300 billion, nursing homes, $248 billion. I mean, it's insane what's happened in the United States and how sick the U.S. has become. I mean, we're leading the world when it comes to heart disease, to diabetes, and to cancer. The leading cause of death on our kids age 14 and under other than accidents is cancer. We have the highest infant death rate of any industrialized nation. And this goes on and on and on. Uh, here's another good, interesting article on Parkinson's disease. This is um, It says that, that one form of coenzyme Q10, Q, Q10 the, the, the umbiguinol, which is what we have carry at Health Masters, has been found to improve the symptoms for some Parkinson's patients and may well be a candidate for adjunctive treatment according to recent clinical research. Now, Parkinson's is another real bad problem with Parkinson's disease. And it's been pretty much untouchable for real, real long time. So you need to realize that it's just something that, you know, you need to be taking coins and IQ10 and fish oils and everything every single day. And also, Parkinson's has also been linked to pesticide and solvent exposure. I wrote a whole article that you can read on that in the uh, at healthmasters.com. Also, ibuprofen literally kills thousands of people every single year with liver failure. I can't even believe that Tylenol, which is ibuprofen, is even on the market, Doug and Joe. It's such a poisonous product. It warns you on the label that it can destroy your liver, but people still pop these things like they're candy and wonder why they're having liver problems and kidney problems and everything else. And so you've got to avoid these things. I mean, they're, they're, these, these products are bad. I mean, and, you know, they warn you not to drink alcohol with them because you can end up having you know, permanent irreversible liver damage within, within, within hours from it. And so it's just one of those things that people need to understand that you've got to avoid these types of compounds. Um, let me read you a little bit about this. Remember in 2004, the Vioxx recall, as you remember, was spurred by nearly 30,000 excess cases of heart attacks and sudden cardiac arrest caused by the drug treatment between 1999 and 2003. By the way, one of the, the, one of the insiders said it was over 150,000 deaths. Despite the fact that scientific research had accumulated as early as 2000 linking Vioxx to increased heart attacks and strokes, the drug manufacturer of Merck and the FDA remained silent, and the death toll steadily increased. The Reuters report focused on new research published in Lancet indicating the risk of heart attack, and finally this thing was expo exposed. And so now we know that ibuprofen and Tylenol, all of these things are just absolutely, they cause anemia, DNA damage, liver damage, hearing loss, hypertension, influenza mortality, miscarriage. They're unbelievably bad for you, and especially when you mix them with, with, with alcohol. But it, but it doesn't make a difference. People still want to go ahead and take the Tylenol, take the ibuprofen, and they think that all of these things are okay to take. And they're not, guys. They're bad for you, and they shouldn't be used. If you have to take something like that, Aspirin's not good for you, but at least it doesn't have all of these horrible side effects, except they can cause intestinal bleeding, so you have to be careful with that, too. So stay with the – and remember, the ibuprofen specifically goes after the kidneys, too. The Tylenol specifically goes after the liver. And the ibuprofen – I remember years ago, I talked to a kid on a cruise ship, and he would take about six ibuprofen before he, he was a rock climber because he said it would actually numb his fingertips when he was climbing the rocks. Is that crazy? Wow. And I told him, I said, well, wow. do you think just maybe it's not good for you that it's doing that? And, and so, uh, so he hadn't really thought about that. Also, a new study just also came out said that raw garlic can help prevent arterial calcification and infection. And so I thought that was a pretty interesting article because I love raw garlic. The only problem is, you know, it just it kind of tears it kind of tears up your breath when you're around other people. So whenever my wife go out and I go out, we always order raw garlic because we love it. And it actually helps to reduce calcium scores. By the way, that's probably how it works to do that. But the, the thing about it is, is that she and I both love that stuff, and uh, it's really really good for you. And uh, also, the calcium scores are one of the things you have to be careful with as far as atherosclerotic plaquing and hardening of the arteries. And that's one of the best things that you can do to reduce calcium scores is to take raw garlic. It's a phenomenal product, by the way. I, I like it. It's, it's, we, that's one thing we always do when we go out to restaurants is we order that. Any questions on that one? No, no. Good to go. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep on right. keep on going, brother. Okay, well let's 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 just jump back on some alternative news. Uh, this is an interesting. This is uh, it says that the judgment. And this is from the All News Pipeline. And this is one of uh, I like. I love reading their stuff. It says judgment is here. Battle lines are drawn and massive fallout expected as call goes out for millions to prepare for civil disobedience 
and Susan Duckloss wrote this, and she's talking about that the church is actually being mobilized for the first time, and that thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of preachers and, and churches are actually signing this, what the United States is going to do if the Supreme Court comes in and approves the uh, gay marriage nationwide. And so, uh, you know, the thing about all of this stuff is, is that we mentioned this earlier in the show, if, you know, if we had a perfect, you know, the United States and the people wanted to go into a different state and if they wanted to do this, that's their choice. I don't particularly agree with it. I Obviously, I'm diametrically opposed to it as a Christian. But the point is, it's just that, uh, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, we need to stand on this thing because remember, remember I talked earlier that we were basically being compromised spiritually and we need to understand that, you know, we've, we've got to stand against this and these, these, these judges that are up there and what they're doing and that they're, they're pro-gay, they need to accuse themselves and be done with this. Now, here's another article here that was written, Obama's complete disarmament of America plan nears completion. And then it goes, this is by Stephen Stanford from the All News Pipeline also. And he says that, the, that what comes next is beyond words. Do you really think that they can get the guns away from us, guys? I don't think they can do it. No. No. I, 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 look, if they tried... Maybe big, big city. <laughs> well, maybe... At that point, to me, the moment they begin um, a nationwide, I'll just say a nationwide, uh, gun confiscation, an active, proactive gun confiscation, it, it's it's over at that point. The shooting starts, people start dropping. I mean, it took complete anarchy. And no, I, I, I don't, I, for some reason, well, looking at this logically, I, I don't believe... Um, I certainly don't believe they can do that effectively. So if I was a satanic elite kind of a leader, I'm thinking, okay, now how would I get people to give up their guns? Well, I can think of a few ways there, but that's just me. Well, the food, the food and water. I yeah, mean, that's, that, that's going to be the primary thing. I mean, because if, if, if that's what, you know, the, if, if you're running out of food and you're running out of water and you can't feed your family, and they say, well, we have this camp downtown, and you can come down to this camp if you'd like, and we've got food and water down there, and we've got, we'll have got, we be able to take care of you and your kids. And then everybody gets on the bus or whatever, and they're coming by the neighborhoods with loudspeakers on to get on the bus. And when you get there, all of a sudden you find out you're walking through a metal detector, and you're going to be cavity searched, and, you know, and you're going to lose everything you've got there. Uh, that would be one way they could do it. In fact, I had read an article a couple of years ago that they said that's what they were planning on doing, is that once they cut out the food, the water supply, that people will come to them and voluntarily give up the guns. Absolutely. And and brother against uh, brother, son against father. It, it, that's one way, I believe. Um, and, of course, you know, when you see something, say something. Well, that conditions the populace for um, turning your, your neighbor in. Hey, I know my neighbor's got a AK-47. Well, you know... Um, well, okay, good job. Now we're going to give you enough water for uh, for you and your family for a day or two or three or whatever, however long, you know, whatever the, the formula might be. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I can see this. And I think that's one of the reasons also that Obama did that executive order, giving him control of all stored food and fuel and everything else. So they can say we have a, you know, we have an executive order that was signed by the president which says that you have to give up your storable food. And that you can't have this, that we have to put this into a community storage pot so everybody will have food. And so we can't let you have food because you can't have more than three or four days of food supply stored. So, guys, right. if it really comes down to that, if it really comes down to that, all hell's going to break loose. I mean, it's going to be bad. And I really hope and pray that it doesn't because that's a really negative frequency. I don't even like thinking about all that kind of stuff because it's just not something that we need to really focus on because the lower the energy that we put out, the more negative we think about stuff, the more power these globalists apparently get over us because that's what they believe that they're doing, you know, you know, in in the ether, so to speak, in the in the in the, in the you know in this in this area above the earth, in which they control all of this stuff through their their um, through their sacrificial things that they do. Let me read you another one too. This is an interesting too. This one came to me the other day, and it's talking about all of these people who are going to jail for abusing their infants with broken bones. Have you guys read these articles on this yet? No, I haven't. And they're, no, they're, calling, yeah, they're, calling, they're, they're calling them abusive parents, but what, what they're doing is they're finding out now, and these doctors are coming forward, and they're finding out that these children have genetic disorders, and they're being misdiagnosed as shaken baby syndrome, 
in which these parents really aren't doing anything, but the vaccines, because of the aluminum in the vaccines, are interfering with proper bone development, and the kids basically have a type of rickets. And when they change the little boy's shirt or his pants or whatever, they pull his arm up to do that, they actually are breaking the humerus or breaking the femur without even doing anything to that child, and they're being charged with child abuse. Huh. Is that nuts? The, well, y- yeah. But, but that fits into and a number not, of different And I'm, and I'm not saying there's aren't sickos out there that do stuff like that. But right. what happened, let me read you this. Says, it, says, uh, it says, when the medical professional suspects that the baby has been violently shaken, they will examine them for the triad of injuries associated with shaken baby syndrome. These are subdural hematomas, bleeds inside of the brain, or retinal hemorrhages bleed behind the eyes, and cerebral edema, swelling or inflammation inside the brain. Whilst a large percentage of the medical establishment continues to embrace the shaken baby syndrome diagnosis, others have become critical and maintain that the violent shaking of a young child is not the only cause of the triad of injuries. And it starts going on how you have all these birth defects and vitamin deficiencies that are being caused by these immunizations that these things are being given. In fact, Dr. Norman Guthick, he was a retired neurosurgeon. He first wrote the first, first description of the shaken baby center back in 1971, talking about whiplash injuries, etc. And then they started realizing that a lot of stuff that he was saying isn't real because what's happening, a lot of times these kids are getting really, really severe vitamin C deficiencies, and they have subclinical scurvy, and they're being diagnosed with these shaken baby syndromes because their brains are actually bleeding out because the, 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 vascular, the vascular integrity is not there, and they're bleeding you know, they're having these subdermal hematomas from it, and they were never shaken from it, and that the aluminum that's coming into their systems are causing their bones not to develop properly, and this aluminum now is causing these children to have brittle bones and have like a type of rickets along with the vitamin C thing that they're having the problems with, and what's happening is that a lot of these reactions that are occurring with these kids and these things is not true. Let me read you this. This is Dr. Innes says. He goes, he's another professional linking adverse reactions to false accusations of SBS for years, he has a paper entitled The Shaky, Shaken Baby Syndrome Myth. He wrote, the new scientific truth that doctors must get familiar with is the so-called shaken baby syndrome can be a flagrant untruth fabricated and advocated by doctors unable to comprehend the fact that the autoimmune reaction from the immunizations are destroying the beta cells of the pancreas, causing insulin deficiency and hence the failure of vitamin C to enter the cells, tissue scurvy. As well as without cellular vitamin C, cellular function is impeded and tissues begin to break down. Hyperglycemia, improving insulin deficiency, is a constant biochemical feature of tissue scurvy misdiagnosed and shaken baby syndrome. As the evidence points to the fact that children alleged to have suffered from this condition called shaken baby syndrome have evidence also of liver dysfunction initiated by an autoimmune response to vaccines causing a deficiency of insulin, again manifested as hyperglycemia. And so he's saying that the vast majority of these cases, including the rickets, are being caused by these vaccines that are causing the aluminum not to allow the bones to form properly and the vitamin C that's being not done properly because they're, they're losing their, their beta cells in their pancreas. Isn't that crazy? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the guy's right. I mean, I mean, I mean, think about this for a second, Doug. We never had shaken baby syndrome between before all these immunizations started getting given. And now it's well, so prevalent. You hear, you know? Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not the prevalence that we see today, or, or even ten That's years right. ago. Yeah, I, I get that, and, and it does make a lot of sense. And, and think about the larger agenda too: putting children into the system, because as soon as, as you have a child with, with any type of broken bone or traumatic injury, um, the, the first thing after the after you see the nurse and the doctor in the ER is you see the social worker who makes an assessment to see if you're, um, you know, a, a, a parent that's uh, beating up the child. And, and I understand that. So there's a multiple... But no, I, I mean, I, I remember a couple of years ago, Savannah was my 12-year-old, then she, I think it was 11 or 10 and a half. She was doing backflips on a trampoline at a party over in Orlando at a good friend of mine's house. And, uh, you know, and I told her not to do the trampoline, but she did it, and she twisted her ankle. And, I mean, it, it, you know, it turned blue on her. I mean, it was twisted. And she comes and came home, and she, you know, of course, kids are always screaming, oh, "I broke my leg! I broke my ankle! Broke my ankle!" You know. And so the guy calls me up and goes, "You know, she twisted her ankle." So we come pick her up, and so we take her over to the uh, doctor. And he orders an X-ray for her, and the people at the X-ray clinic were looking at like, you know, like we were some kind of like abusive parents. And I, yeah. and I looked at him and I said, "Here's the here's here's what we're getting from the doctor. She twisted her ankle doing a backflip on a trampoline." You need to chill out and cut out the looks. I couldn't even believe it. But they were looking at me like, oh, why that child? That's why that child got an injury, you know? And I'm thinking to myself, this is stupid. 
You know, shaking baby syndrome is for infants who can't talk and they can't tell what happened with their parents. I mean, this girl was saying, oh, yeah, I did a backflip, blah, blah, blah. I mean, so you get all of this stuff going on with the Department of Family Services now. And these guys are like, these guys are like nutbags, Doug. I mean, when they get involved in your life, they, they're like a dog on a pit bull. They don't want to quit. I've had so many friends that have done nothing wrong with their kids, and these guys get involved in their life, and they, and they go through hell for two or three years until they get themselves exonerated. Because with that organization, you're innocent until you prove yourself guilty. If you can't prove yourself guilty, they're going to just harass you. Oh, yeah, exactly right. And I've I've, I've seen family members uh, go through that whole process, and, and it's out of control. It really is, and, and it's getting the it's getting the big brother, the uh, government, into your lives. And once they're in, the, it, it takes. Well, they're not coming out. I guarantee it. Well, no, I had I had one I had one lady I was reading. I think she was writing a story on News with Views. I'm not sure. Maybe one of Debbie Kidd's other contributors. And she was writing a whole story. And this girl actually worked for the state. And something happened, and she got accused of child abuse. Somebody dropped a dime on this woman, and it wasn't even true because people don't even realize anybody can drop a dime on you and say something, and that whether or not it's true or not, they have to investigate. And this lady was there, and this girl ended up having a mark on her or something because she had fallen off a swing or something. And so they, they, they show up, and so she completely cooperates with them and just starts talking to them. Next thing you know, they're hauling the kid away, yep. and they're taking the kid, and they're, they're, they're like charging her with child abuse. And yep. so uh, she, she, she was coming in, and she, she wrote, and she had written this entire article, and she said, here's what I've learned from this. If they ever show up at your door, tell them you're not going to talk to them without an attorney present. They're more than welcome to inspect the child. They're not talking to the child without an attorney present for the child to to, uh, to be an advocate for the child, and that that's how that's going to work. And then you will, and you will arrange. They can they can check the kid out when they're there, but then they have to come back to do the meeting when the attorneys are present. And she goes, and other than that, don't say anything to them. Just ignore them. Just just say, tell them go away. I want I want legal counsel. And she said, if you do that, most of the time it saves you up just a plethora of problems because they realize that you're not going to play the game and you're going to get the attorneys involved and they're going to go to easier pickings, so to speak. Well, and that's true. But the the children that are taken away and even to the uh, to, to the advanced extent of putting in, in foster care. A lot of these, um, and, and people think that this is really out there, but a lot of this um, leads to very bad things. I'll, I'll just leave yeah, it at that. It opens doors that can never be shut. Leads to very, very well, bad well, no, we, uh, what we know is that we know that we know sex trafficking and a lot of stuff comes from there. there you go. And the kids yeah. are passed through two or three foster families, and the state loses track of where in the world they are, and they just disappear. And they yep. go away, and nobody can find what happened to these kids. And all of a sudden, it's like, well, I want my kid back. Well, we really don't know where your kid is. They ran away. They ran off from this foster parent. We don't know where they are now. And you're, they're like, but, you know, where's the foster parent? Well, they left, too. We don't know where they are, either. Well, they, they didn't run away. They probably sold that child into sex slave traffic. And it, and it happens all the time, Doug. I mean, sex slavery is one of the biggest trafficking things in the world right now, and nobody wants to talk about it. And a lot of that is right. fed by the Department of Family Services, these sicko people that work for these guys, because how much money they can get by bringing these kids in and selling them. It, it, very and, true. And, you want to think, and, you, and, and guys, I'm not making – Doug, am I making any of this up? Not at all. No, we we've talked about this off air, and we've uh, and we, Joe and I here have done the research on this. No, no, th- this is big business, a very right. sick, twisted uh, big business for the uh, Satanists out there. That's right. The same thing with the Chinese body parts. I mean, they bring people to prisons that have death sentences, or just because they don't like them, I guess. And then what they do is they find them wait until they have a matching organ with a kidney or with a liver or with a heart or whatever, and then they just basically murder them kill them, and then take their organs and sell them on the international market. That's right. And if you don't believe that, that's true, too. It's organ, it's the, the trafficking of human organs. I mean, when people have a lot of money, I mean, I remember one guy a few years ago, he had this huge corporation. If you knew the name of the corporation, everybody knew who he is. But, I mean, he had to have a new heart, and he was on a transplant list. Well, he, he, he was on the list for like one week, and he had a heart. You know, the guy was a billionaire. He had a heart <laughs> within a week, you know, and you kind of wonder where the heart came from, you know. But the thing about it is, you know, money makes this whole satanic mess go around, and when people start throwing that kind of money around, they're going to get a heart no matter what, where it comes from. And they don't really care a lot of these guys, or a kidney, or a liver, or whatever they want to have transferred over to them, because they're going to, they're going to find a donor very, very quickly if they're spending enough money to do it. And I remember my sister, one thing she told me that was actually accurate, and she has a medical degree from the University of Florida, and she also has a uh, doctorate of science from Harvard. I don't think I ever told you guys that or not. Uh, very, very smart academically. 
But I remember when she told me uh, one time, she was, I was actually uh, uh, riding a motorcycle back then. I still do every once in a while, but I don't do it very much often because it's a little bit dangerous and my, ref- my reflexes aren't as fast as they used to be. And I remember she told me one time, she goes, well, Ted, you've got to be really careful not to sign a donor, an organ donor card. And I said, what do you mean? And she goes, well, we get almost all of our organ donors from motorcycle accidents on Interstate 75 outside of Gainesville. And she goes, and I'll be honest with you, Ted, I'm telling you this off the record. She goes, but some of these people aren't quite dead when we start pulling organs out of them. And I said, Lois, you didn't just say that, did you? She goes, yeah, I'm saying that. She goes, they're like, they're like brain dead, but they're not quite dead. And so, you know, we just get releases from the, pe- the people just to go ahead and just terminate their life and start taking organs out of them. And she goes, it happens all the time. You know, and there's a really good movie that people can watch. Actually, it's not a really good movie. It's really an awful movie, but it'll really be an education to you. I saw it years and years ago. It was on the medical profession. And that, they're not all like this, by the way. They're not all like this, just a lot of them, okay? And the name of the movie was The House of God. And they were talking about the uh, what they did and the people they killed and all this other kind of stuff in this movie as medical personnel uh, when they just got tired of dealing with certain people or their insurance ran out. And it's just something that you need to be aware of if you're ever going to hospitals. And that's why I always tell people this. From a prevention standpoint, take care of yourself. You know, get a good nutritionist, get a good naturopath, you know, get on our supplements, learn how to eat right, learn how to stay healthy, learn how to stay off of drugs. Avoid drugs and medical professionals as much as you possibly can. Because once you start going into hospitals and you start getting into their arenas and they start putting you under surgery, you sign when you sign surgery papers, it gives them the right they sign you sign your rights away that whatever they find they can fix or do whatever they want to do to you while you're under the surgery. That's what they ask you to sign. Most people don't even have, they don't even realize they sign stuff like that when they go under surgery. They do, you know, unless you refuse to sign that and you have to make them you, you can modify it. But the point is, it's better to stay away from medical professionals. It's better not to go on statin drugs. It's better not to do all of these different things. Just stay healthy. That's one of the things my kids, my parents, my parents have always said to me. Who do you use for a pediatrician? And I'm like, I don't use a pediatrician. We have a general practitioner, Dr. Harold and Todd Robinson in Lakeland. If we need a medical doctor, that's who we go to. They're basically natural medical doctors. They don't really like to use drugs. Well, who do you use for pediatrician? And I say, I just answer that. We don't have a pediatrician. <laughs> well, where do you take your children to be, to be checked every month or every two months when they're little? I'm like, we don't do that. Well, why not? I said, then my response is always this. Why am I going to take a healthy child to a doctor's office full of sick kids? <laughs> I mean, is, is that a concept that's eluded everybody? I mean, cause my, all my children are super healthy, super smart. It's in condition. This morning, I remember Savannah and Lexi, they had a contest. We had like a squat bar. It was like a 45-pound bar. And uh, and, that, and then there's one's 12 and one's 14, and they're, they're conditioned athletes. And they had a contest today. Who could do the most squats, parallel squats, not full squats, with a 45-pound bar in one set? In other words, they don't put the bar down. They don't take any breaks. They just continually do squats. And that little that little Savannah, that little stinker, did 201 squats in one set. Wow. One <laughs> set. Okay, a 12-year-old, well, then the 14-year-old jumps on the bar, she does 202, you know, just to beat Savannah. And I started laughing at them both, and I said, man, I said, you guys are in shape. You guys are conditioned. They're like conditioned athletes. They can run like the wind. Their body fats are low. They look absolutely great. I mean, and so they're always in shape. They take their supplements and they work out. They don't eat GMO foods and they eat organic. And Harrison is the same thing. You know, first degree black belt in karate. Uh, he stays lean. He needs to fill out a little bit more, but he's only he just turned 16. He'll gain some more weight with the muscle as he gets a little bit older. But the point is, I mean, we practice what we preach. My wife is a size 2. She's 58 years old. She weighs 118 pounds. And, you know, we practice what we preach. And in fact, if you go to the bodybyted.com website or the Health Masters website, you'll see a picture of my book where you can get it on Amazon if you want. Breakthrough Health is a picture of me and my wife on the cover. And that cover, I was 55 years old and she was 54. And we still look the same. I mean, we yeah, don't really I, I can't attest to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we that. look the same. Yeah, I mean, we still look the same. I, mean, we, I decided, just, I, I, you know, I, I was going to do aging one time, Doug, and I didn't like it, so I decided not to participate. Because <laughs> 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 it's just not it's, because if, if you just if you just work out with the weight for 30 minutes a day and you don't go berserk and get your cortisol up working out too hard at my age, you can stay in pretty good shape and, and not not 
not really age. You kind of get to that certain point of agelessness that Paul Bragg talked about, who was a big naturopathic physician back in the 60s and 70s, actually started health food stores. And so there's a place that you get where you just kind of stay the same all the time. You just always feel the same. I mean, I'm, I'm 59 years old. It's almost 11 o'clock where I am, and I feel absolutely wonderful. I did have a purple stick at 6 o'clock. I did do that about four hours, five hours ago. But that, that's long worn off. Uh, but, you know, but that's, that's just how we eat. That's how I live. The purple stick's a caffeine stick that's got green tea in it that doesn't have coffee, so it doesn't elevate cortisol. Plus, it has B vitamins in it. It gives you a lot of energy. I take them every single day. I keep promising to send some to Doug, but every time I get them in, I get sold out on them again. And so every time we send anything to you, Doug, we, we are always out of purple sticks. And uh, so I'm getting frustrated no with those things. <laughs> No, no problem, Ted. Hey, I do, I do have a. Uh, I got an email here. This is urgent, critical. Uh, uh, somebody has uh, extremely high cholesterol, uh, critical levels, high cholesterol. Wants to know what uh, they should do. I don't know the levels. Uh, it's just a very generic uh, statement. Any comment on that, Ted? Yeah, I do. I do. We, you know, if, if, if cholesterol is, you know, between two and three hundred, I don't think it's really that urgent. Uh, if you get up four, five, six, seven, eight hundred cholesterol, that's pretty high because the blood gets too thick. Uh, and so it, it deals with blood viscosity. Okay, so let's think. Let's think through this for a second. Okay, when you have real high triglycerides and real high blood fats, you know, and, and you know, cholesterols, what ends up happening is your blood increases in viscosity. It's like using a real heavy weight motor oil. I wrote a whole article on this. You can read the whole article if you'd like at healthmasters.com. It's free. You can read the whole article. And the problem with that is it creates, it creates what's called frictional resistance in the arterial walls. So the heart has to pump really, really hard, which really elevates the blood pressure, massively increases the risks of stroke and everything else because the heart's having to pump so hard to pump blood sludge. That's the problem with high triglycerides and high triglycerol. Good triglycerol when they get real, real high. I know Rod Parsley. I think his cholesterol was like at six or seven hundred. His triglycerides were over a thousand when I worked with him uh, back about ten years ago, and we got that down to normal within just a few months with absolutely no drugs whatsoever. And the way you do that, number one, is you have to drink more water. That's that, that's why. Because think about it, the primary component of the blood is water. If the blood gets real, real thick, how do you get the blood to thin up? You've got to put more water into it. You got to thin the blood. So drink at least half your body weight in fluid ounces in water. So if you weigh 300 pounds, drink at least 150 ounces of distilled water per day. Sip on it throughout the day. Don't try to drink it all before you go to bed or you'll be up all night using the bathroom. And sip on it throughout the day. That will help to decrease the blood viscosity. In addition to that, you've got to start taking something like a sustained-release niacin product, which will bring the cholesterol down almost immediately by itself. It works much better than statin drugs with high cholesterol, and it doesn't have any of the side effects. But I don't really think you should be taking niacin after the cholesterol gets back to normal. In addition to that, you need to be taking things, something to put in your blood to make your blood slipperier, uh, kind of like you know putting Slick 50 in your blood with the vitamins that you take. I recommend that you use cod's liver oil for that and also vitamin E. That's Those are two things that are super important because they're both blood thinners. And so I would start taking a couple of tablespoons of cod liver oil a day. And if, you're, if, so, if it's a guy, I at least take 1,600 vitamin. I use a vitamin E every single day, and that will really, really help to make the blood thinner and make it more slippery. That's one of the reasons when you have high cholesterol, when your blood gets too thick, when the viscosity increases, they give you blood thinners like Coumadin or Warfarin, which is basically rat poison. So you don't want to do that. You can do the same thing using cod liver oil or using vitamin E. Now, if you're taking these blood thinners, don't just stop them abruptly. Check with your doctor to find out if you're eligible, you're a candidate for taking the natural blood thinners. Even aspirin will thin the blood, but I don't recommend doing it on a regular basis or on a daily basis because what it will do it, will, it can cause retina detachment and cause, a, it cause, it can cause what's called wet macular degeneration. It will cause the retina to pull away from the back of the eye, causing the blood to go in there and bleed behind the eye, behind the retina, which can give you macular degeneration. That's the problem with taking aspirin every single day. It's such a good blood thinner. It does too good of a job. That's why I don't recommend using aspirin. That's why I said earlier you could take aspirin, but it can cause gastrointestinal bleeding, plus it can also cause problems with the retina. I know with me, if I take aspirin, for just a couple of days, if I have a back injury, I pull a muscle or whatever, I can start telling my vision gets a little bit funny. And so I don't like taking aspirin at all unless I absolutely have to. But that's the best thing to do is to go ahead and use the water, the vitamin E, and the cod liver oil. And, of course, you need to cut out the dairy products, the cheese, the bread, the pasta, the rice, the potatoes, the starch, the juice. All of those things need to come out. You need to be staying on, like, grilled chicken with vegetables, or baked chicken with vegetables every single day, you don't have to really worry that much about the quantity that you eat, and uh, you'll find you'll lose 
weight. You'll, you'll actually increase lean muscle mass if you work out doing it, and you'll bring your cholesterol under control very, very quickly by just those few simple steps. But if you do have a problem with that cholesterol being high and the heart's having to work so hard, I do recommend that you take the ambiguinol or the coenzyme Q10. Uh, I would take three or four capsules of that every single day. I do personally every day just to keep the uh, heart muscle really, really strong. All right, and thank you did, for that. And, and, and take the pomegranate juice, too, because that helps to reduce the plaquing in the arteries naturally. And pomegranate juice is actually very, very good. Um, <laughs> never had it before. Ted uh, uh, recommended that to me in the conversation uh, last week, I think it was. And uh, I've got to tell you, not bad at all. Never it's, had it it's pricey when you get the organic. When you get the pricey stuff, it's, the organic stuff is pricey. But, you know, I only take about four ounces of it a day. Yeah. And uh, it, so it lasts a long time, so it, it's no big deal. I mean, because a quarter of it's like ten bucks, so it's yeah. you know that's forty dollars a gallon. It's pretty expensive, but uh, but what it does, it just it's all organic and it's not from processed pomegranates with a bunch of chemical ex, you know spellers in them. So it's a really good product. That's what we use. Fantastic. Well, well Ted, we got about uh, six minutes left. I can't believe how fast this program went, man. Uh, you, well, you got the last uh, five minutes. Where do you want to go here? We probably should talk about. I, I want to. Here, here's what I want to do. The other day, I, I listened to a video today. Some guy had this mass warning. I'm not going to mention any names because I actually like the guy. He does a lot of alternative news, and he was having this big special thing on you know this past weekend, and this special video went out, and you know warning everybody of this, and warning everybody of that, and warning everybody of Jade Helm, and warning everybody that the elites were leaving the country and all that kind of stuff. And you know, here's the thing, guys. Number one. You got to let go and let God deal with all the stuff with you guys. Okay, number one. Here's what you got to look at: is what's the worst thing that happens to us is we end up dying. Okay, we already have victory in Christ Jesus. So what difference does that make? I mean, I already died to sin once before. I was already born again once before. So what difference does it make? They already killed me. Well, I already but voluntarily did that once. So what difference does it make? Remember, I'm almost 60 years old. Okay. If I have another 30, 40 good years, okay, well, that's great. I probably will, you know, as well as I take care of myself, God willing. Uh, but the point is, you know, I've already had 60 good years. I'm not going to get into some kind of frenzy every single night and not be able to sleep at night because I'm worried about what's going to happen in this world. I'm going to do everything I can to expose it. I'm going to sleep at night and realize that I'm going to let go and let God. I'm going to realize that it's not by power, it's not by might, it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And I realize that our God is bigger than the God of this world. I got, I've got that one figured out, Doug, Joe. I realize that, you know, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I was reading this Bible study to the kids just the other day. I'm going to read it to you guys real quick since you're letting me have the last couple minutes. This is, an out of, this is out of 1 John. And I was reading it to the kids because I wanted them to understand who God is and what God does for us and, and who he is and, and, and the love that he has for us. And, and what's interesting about all of this is that people don't realize the power that we have as Christians. And here's what it says. It says, this is, this is 1 John uh, chapter 3, verse 19. He goes, this then is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Whenever our hearts condemn us, for God is greater than our hearts, he knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and we receive from him anything we ask because we obey his commands and we do what pleases him. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. For those who obey his commands live in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit that he gave us. See, we don't have a spirit of combination. We have a spirit of power and of love and a sound mind because of what we have through Christ Jesus. And we, we as Christians can't walk in fear and you know, and, and angst, that's the German word for that. Just, we, we can't have that. We've got to understand that we know who has our future. We know who our hope is in. We know that we are eternal beings. We're basically a spirit being experiencing a physical existence in a, in a hologram in a skin suit, okay, made out of, you know, electrical bits. You know, you know we, we've actually got a pixel count to our bodies. And so this whole thing's not real. Okay, it's not real, not compared to the next universe, the next dimension that we're going to be going into. So don't walk in fear. Eat right, eat clean, stay off of drugs, exercise, take care of the skin suit. It's our little computer here on this hologram. And realize that regardless of what happens in this world, that God's still in control and that prayer still changes things. And it doesn't matter what they do to our physical bodies, they can't touch our soul after we've been saved. 
and they know that, and that's why they're so hair-lipped. So we have authority over them. That's why he says in that verse in John, ask whatever you want him to do for you, and he'll do it because he's, you're obeying his commandments and you're doing what pleases him. And see, we know that we're to obey his word, we know we're to obey his commandments, and we're to, we know that we're supposed to have Jesus Christ as our Lord. And if we do that, and we do that on an ongoing basis, and we realize who we are, and we stay in prayer, which is so important, you know, I pray with the kids every single morning, and sometimes it ends up being two hours because we're doing these little life lessons. But what it does, it re-energizes me, and it makes me realize who we are and the power that we have through Christ Jesus. And if you do that, then this whole new world order has no authority, and it has no power over you. And if we do that in the aggregate as Christians, they'll have no power or authority over any of us, and we will change the entire matrix that we live in, because what will happen is we'll elevate the consciousness of the people on this planet to realize that Jesus Christ is Lord, and that we're all supposed to walk in love and forgiveness one towards another. And if we do that, we'll stop all these wars and all this nonsense, Doug. Fantastic. Ted, we're out of time. God bless you, my friend. Thank you so very much. Healthmasters.com. That's healthmasters.com. Folks, please pay him a visit there as well and sign up for his newsletter, um, Breakthrough Health. You've got to get that book. All supplements go to place, healthmasters.com. Ted, thanks so much for uh, for being our guest tonight. God bless you. And Doug, you guys, thanks for having me on, guys. Thanks so much. Bless you guys. Right. Good night. Bye-bye. That was Ted Brewer, Dr. Ted Brewer, healthmasters.com. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Stan Dale. Wednesday, John Robertson breaking down the Hollywood uh, occultism. Thursday, a special treat, a former guest of John B. Wells, episode 306 and 311, I believe. 309 and 314. 309 314. DJ will be talking about Jade Helm, and then Nathan Liao will be on Friday. It's going to be a fantastic week. Until then, stay safe, God bless, and have a great evening.